everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Hate It Here, where we spend, I'm going to say, two hours these days hating the world so you don't have to. All the worst news stories from across the globe compiled in one place uh, with thoughts given from me and Sam, my loyal co-host and producer. How are you doing? You survived the vaccine then? Yeah, I'm right. And somehow I just fixed my sleeping pattern last night. No, usually if, you, if sleep pattern's fucked, you've got to work into it and like start waking up later and later. I just went to bed. It was great. I woke up at a normal time. I was like, fucking hell, what a treat. I just went to, I just so, went to sleep. Do you attribute that to the fresh feeling of the vaccine? I reckon it's because of the healthy doses of vitamins and minerals I've been taking because of the vaccine. I reckon that's what's oh, happening yeah. like. You know what I mean, kick me into well, a more human schedule. Go on then, give me, give me your uh, well, all the special. Well, right, I'll right. go next week. So I take a probiotic supplement, which is just yeah, nice. uh, it says by your cultures complex. Again, I don't really know. It's got they a bunch are. of bacteria in there. <laughs> and then are. I just take a multivitamin, standard one you can get anywhere. It's got everything in it. Mm. And then I take on top of that just extra doses of vitamin D. Well, good, awesome, good for you, mate. I'm glad. I'm glad you made it. I was worried for a bit. Three days in bed, I thought, you know what, Sam? Like, what if? Yeah. What, what, what if, what if you know, like I said, it's not like I was, oh, I'm so ill. It's just like, fuck, I could do with a sleep. Like, <laughs> that's all yeah. I was like, oh, I could definitely do with another sleep. Well, I've had the text, mate. There uh, you go. I, they, they really want to give me the fucking vaccine. They, they sent me a text. You are now eligible for your vaccine. Next yeah. day, another text. Come and get your vaccine. <laughs> went, went and got the mail. Yeah. Oh, there's a letter there, Richard yeah. Lewis, you know. Open it up. Vaccine. You appear to have not had your vaccine. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, all right, guys, guys, I get it. Like, for fuck's sake, I'm, I'm going to get one soon when I can be asked. But, you know, yeah, they're, they're It's really... probably because loads of people are, I don't know, I think loads of people are, like, not showing up. But why would they be asked if you haven't booked in? Like, because what's happening is loads of people say, yeah, I'll come get a vaccine, and then they just don't show up. So yeah, then breakage. at the end of the day, they've got, like, 500, 600 doses, just like, anyone want a dose, come now. If you want a dose, get to, my, get to this fucking hospital now. Yeah, so uh, you know, probably get mine soon as well. Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wait and see um, what's going on with it. But um, so uh, let's let's crack on with this. I, I'm gonna start the the show because I've been enjoying the clips channel. I don't know if you, do you remember yeah, when I've been we watching used to, some of them. Yeah, you remember you remember when we used to be happy young men. <laughs> remember that. Know. It's mostly us laughing outrageous shit. I wouldn't call it like wholesome. <laughs> it's no, it's like not wholesome. No, stuff. not not wholesome. But do you remember when we just sort of like actually used to enjoy life? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm mainly talking about myself here, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going. I still do, Rich. I still do. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking, like, I want you know, we haven't had a good natter about something. So there was a story. Uh, that broke, and of course, because the world is mental, it wasn't even like a story. But I've never talked to you about this topic, so I wanted to get into it. Um, mm -hmm. Did you see that they've confirmed that UFOs are UFOs? Oh, yeah. Oh, mate. Oh, I, I've been long in on this, mate. Yeah, here you go. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with this, right? Because basically, this was um, uh, start of April. So, you know, obviously April Fool's, all of that. Right, but people have been talking about this for a long time. I think Trump, on his way out, was going, "And I'm going to declassify all that Roswell shit or something." But he's yeah. just a mentally ill man, isn't he? So whatever, um, you don't pay too much attention to to him, uh, and we never did. But the um, but the Pentagon uh, confirmed that some of the leaked photos that came out uh, were actually legitimate. Oh, you know uh, that... they are, mate. Have you seen the video where uh, I can't remember? Uh, why can't I think of the word? Who were the Air Force in America? They just called it the Air Force. Yeah, but we'll like call a, them the Air Force. There was yeah. some sort of like special. Yanko knows all about them. Like. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna read the sponsor, but it's. I think it was just the Air Force. But basically, like they had spotted something on their radar, like a blip came up. They're like, "Oh, go check this out. There's something on the fucking radar." And they go, yeah. and they're like struggling to get on camera because it, it's like basically what they said is it's debugging, uh, like it's bugging the radars automatically. Yeah, so they're trying yeah. to follow, and they're trying to follow, and it's flying so quick. And this guy. He told the story on Joe Rogan, but basically you can do it. Yeah, it's like on Joe Rogan. AI. You look like a nutter on Joe Rogan. Though. No, no, no. I think what you're confusing is every time that he comes on, they bring a nutter with him, like, and like the oh, Air right, Force maybe. guy was really reasonable. He's like, listen, I don't know what that is, but we've spotted multiple of them. It behaves like this. We don't have this kind of technology. The whole reason right. they're sending us out to look is because we don't know what it is. But basically, yeah, yeah. it's like this tic tac thing, and the guy managed to get a manual lock on onto it instead of using like the computer. Like he locked onto it for long enough, it's tracked it, and it's this tic tac mate, and it's just going, and it'll go and it'll just stop, and then it's. 
gone, but just like propulsions away. And there's no like jet stream from it. There's no like heat coming from it. You don't see any air displacement. It just goes. And so what is it then, Sam? It's fucking UFO, obvious. No, but I mean, like a UFO doesn't have to be an alien ship, right? No, that's what I mean. Some what exactly what a UFO means? An identifiable object. I reckon it's something that we haven't made you, but because if we would, we trust me, everyone be making that shit. Yeah, but like obviously you don't get to see what the what they're yeah, making. Yeah, but but on the I don't. Today. But the military do. That's what creeps me about because yeah, like but not even military. military. They have all levels of clearance. Nah, no, but they understand like basically what's available. Like for example, yeah. if they find a jet from a different country, even if it's higher tech than theirs, they could see like okay, I understand how that could work. Maybe it's like super advanced AI. We still know what AI yeah. is, but like the whole thing is just like we don't even know how to move like that. But like I couldn't. Scientists are like I don't know how that works. There's no propulsion. There doesn't seem to be using like fuel because generally there's a displacement of air and stuff like that. Just nothing. Just take the one flights. The one that fucking I was looking at going like, what even could that be? Was that you know the night vision one with the spheres? And yeah, and they pop up the into water. the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's that like? Exactly. What's happening there? That's terror from the deep. And, that is and from these videos, That's what the that thing is. that makes it even creepier is like these. If they wanted to, they wouldn't have to be seen, right? Because what they are mm. saying is it it actively jams their radar so they can't track it, and it can move faster than we could ever move. So it's almost like they're basically like teasing you, like oh look at me, oh like giving you a little taste, like just getting mm. you ready for the future, a little taste of UFO, get you ready. But yeah, it's been it's been on my mind because, like, obviously, right? I don't believe it. Well, so in an infinite universe, there's a ton of it's probably loads of life, and it's constantly expanding and all that, right? Yeah. Like, that's fine. Yeah. So I accept somewhere on the other side of the universe, there probably is an alien race of some sort of comparable uh, intelligence to to us, if not superior. But also, I you know, I've, I've been watching loads of documentaries about this stuff like why haven't the aliens come and you know you know about the fermi paradox and uh the great filter right is that you know like if that. you ever get smart enough to do it you end up killing yourself is, is that the paradox? yeah but that's one of the theories that basically there is there is something that stops intelligent life reaching a point of intergalactic travel because remember unlike is it, they fucked up with the film interstellar because it what it's in interstellar is just among your stars it's in the yeah. galactic what they do anyway that's neither here nor there the you know so obviously if it, we there, there's loads of stuff that has to go right for you to be able to achieve in the galactic travel one of which of course the big theory is you would it would have to be faster than light some people yeah. said not necessarily you could just have beings that live for like yeah incredibly you could also long have stasis and... etc you could put yourself yeah. in stasis our rule theory <laughs> Or maybe you know they but live for a really long time and perceive then, time like, differently. Yeah, yeah. if you would want yeah. to travel intergalactically to any real level, it would have to be faster than like like otherwise yeah. you're like what are you doing? You're going to be waiting well, so, you know, ten so, thousand so, years so in stasis. And, and basically, what they call the Great Filter is that there is something that occurs along the journey to that point you would get to that basically just kills you. It's yeah, just, imports. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so obviously, I've said it many times, we're watching the fucking Great Filter play out now because humanity, as this podcast proves, has gone backwards. <laughs> we're, 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 we're returning to monkey, but not in a good way, not in a mean way, just in a horrible way. We are just becoming atavistic, nightmarish creatures, uh, which there's some new stories that, that we're going to get into is definitely, um, definitely going to prove that. But, so you know, I've never believed in aliens. Because I think the idea of like, if you've cracked that particular nut, if you've beaten yeah. that problem, I don't understand why you fly to an Earth, of, like a planet of primitive beings, Earth, yeah. come down uh, and then just well, slink in the shadows, sticking like ET right. fingers up our asses. If, right. So we're pretty much going to accept this alien somewhere, right? But for them to come to us to have any kind of spot, whether it's them or just crafts they make, they ha they have to share the human instinct of wanting to conquer or explore, you know what I mean? Like, they've got to right. have some semblance to us if they are arsed enough to create these spaceships and not only create them, come and visit other places. Otherwise, why would they? You know what I mean? They'd look at Earth and say, nothing sure. to learn, let's not go. Whereas, like, think, it, But think it about explorers like on Earth. Think, think about explorers on Earth and when, like, you get to a foreign land, you know, back when we, you know, conquered the oceans, let's say, you know, you get to the other side yeah. and... You want to interact with the other people over there, right? I mean, that yeah, makes but sense, it doesn't it? It depends. 
like because imagine you know, f- how much further ahead they must be than us like we li- we could be like a microbial being in a par- i don't think it's that extreme but you know what i mean it's like we are boring almost and the only thing that could come is bad like if if they might know like if we show up on this earth they're gonna lose their motherfucking minds like and there's no there's no technology here we need they haven't got any special minerals right you know who gives a fuck maybe we'll just have a joke around make the army shit themselves pop up a few ufos like so for me, there yeah. seems as if there is some sort of similarities between if there are aliens and humans, because they, they, they kind of like, te- you know what I mean? They're like teasing you, almost knowing they're fucking with you. It shows they have some sort of thought of like, if other people see me, it's going to cause a problem. Yeah, but then what if it is just like some super fast fucking Chinese? Well, even th- well, the tech would machine. be so well hidden. Because the tech would be like a gravity, is it gravity propulsion? It's basically without fuel, so you can move air around you. So you can propel yourself by moving the air around you as opposed to pushing yourself through that. I think that's the basic idea of the layman's explanation. But if that exists, then fuck knows we could do that, mate. You could do anything. Well, listen, mate, I was on standby while we're talking about fucking UFOs. You see that shit about the Chinese rocket? No. See that? You you must have seen this in the news. No, I don't think so. Right, so there was a, a Chinese, right, the the Chinese sent a rocket up in, I mean, we do it too, everyone does it, you know, you launch stuff up, you're testing out your rockets, you know, for the day we have to invariably conquer other planets and land on other planets, because we're, we're going to hollow this one out. Right. Um, and, the, you know, a Chinese rocket had gone up, and what goes up must come down, it had gone up, burnt out, they'd yeah. done a double ender, it was spinning yeah. through space. And uh, anyway, it was the, 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 all this week, headlines, oh, the Chinese rocket's coming back. It's coming back to Earth, and we don't know where it's going to land. It's gone around the Earth twice, and now it's starting to come into the right. atmosphere. So I was geared up. I thought, look, knowing my luck, it's my house. <laughs> yeah, grow up. Why not? Mate, do you realize how small that would have? The chances of that are Yeah, it's but like... knowing my luck. No is what mate. I'm Knowing my luck, it was going to come straight through my roof, mate. So I've been on high alert all day. That's why what we're doing the show. What are you gonna so... do? Sprint away from a rocket? Like there's not, there's not gonna be any raid siren. You're not gonna know what to. No, just, gonna... just looking up at the sky. And yeah. That. What? So you're just stood outside looking up like a dog, but just yeah. perma staring yeah. at the sky. Yeah. Well, I don't need to do that now. We can. That's why we sent the show live because because it's know? actually it's crashed in the Indian Ocean, hasn't oh, it? There we go. Yeah, as you'd expect. There's a lot of ocean about, like. Yeah, it turns out actually the odds were in- yeah. infinitely small, um, and the chances of it just going into the water was was more than likely. Landed ages ago. It's only just been reported in the news. So they I already just find it. Or they already just report it. Like, uh, just just got up on the All on right. the news stories. But uh, yeah, yeah, look, I'll show you. Uh, here it is. Out of control. Uh, Chinese rocket lands in Indian Ocean. Is it, That must be pretty uncommon, right? Because it, this is that term, space trash, like shit that we've yeah. launched up that's gone wrong, just stays up yeah. there. So I wonder how it came back down. Like. S- space trash is also uh, an adult film. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, sci-fi themed it is, like the launch. Um, great movie. Anyway, it's not. I don't know, made it up. But yeah, <laughs> the, the, it's it's back, it's landed. We're, we're, all, we're all safe. We don't need to worry about... Chinese space debris landing on our heads. But yeah, they're doing all sorts of mad shit, mate. That's why I'd, uh, I just think UFOs are just UFOs. Yeah, That's but, what I think. I don't know. It'd have to... Yeah, but mate, you say they're doing mad shit. They can't even like, make their land rocket land. Oh, they got gravity propulsion. That's what I mean. Like, if they are gravity propulsion, mate, they'd be SpaceX in like mad. Like, they'd be living a dream. They wouldn't have all this fuel. You wouldn't need all this rocket fuel. I'd just fucking command it to fly like a magic carpet, mate. They wouldn't mm. need all this shit. Well, you got to be careful with that, though, because, like, you know, I, I've said this. This is mad paranoid. This is, like, where I always promised this wouldn't turn into Info Wars. Sometimes it does have to go a bit Info Wars. I'm utterly convinced that we are further along the extinction path than global governments are letting on. That's my thing at the moment. In what, as in, like, global warming or just everything in general? Everything. I think we're past the point of salvation and no one's saying anything about it i think the soils are depleted i think we're fucked i think we got 30 years of like nutrition in the soil i think the planet is fucking scorchio i think the final fucking melting of the ice sheets is already well underway and basically scientists are going out with these grants and they're going oh yeah it's pretty bad in that like but i reckon some other ultra scientists that work for governments know where we're at and i reckon we're all fucked that's what i think that's why I'm just the like, thing you know is, what? with that theory, wouldn't it? I always thought it'd be the reverse. It would always be the high up scientists who know 
everything and done anything. But like, yeah, even me, look- York, a scientist could tell you if the world's about. You know what I mean? Like a, a scientist who's a professor at a uni or something could say like, oh, the world's melting. Like, I mean, yeah, I, think- I know, but yeah, but like what I'm saying is, you know, those guys who go up to like the uh, Antarctic and that, yeah. right? they're sent there on like a research grant they're normal folks they get their findings and they say yeah this is pretty yeah. fucking bad but i reckon there's some motherfuckers already out there that they don't know about in bases and shit like in the thing and they've gone way down <laughs> and, right and they've gone way down and they know it's all over right and they're feeding information back to the government they're like, drinking got- slushies from yeah, the glaciers we, like <laughs> we, we got 30 years so you're out as one of the elite one percenters you know true controllers of all humanity you got a choice we either go to a fucking base on the moon, maybe Mars, if we can get our yep. shit together. You go with it, or yeah. you're underground in a bunker and we need to start stockpiling shit now and making biodomes that the world doesn't know about. Probably what them UFOs are up to, mate. They go, bloop! We're making a secret underwater biodome for Elon Musk and all his homies and you can all get fucked with the soil that doesn't even grow plants. That's what's going on, mate. I don't know. Stay the other thing from all those leaks, you no, know, like the UFOs, the guys Joe Rogan brings out, obviously some of them are mental, mm. but what's that other guy's name? He worked at fucking the super secret alien base area 51 someone else yeah, yeah. know his name nothing's going on at area yeah. 51 by the way basically he said from Nothing's the shit they had from uf bob lazar that's the boy he was saying not rem was, lazar his job was to like reverse engineer the shit they found and they found yeah. he's like we couldn't make this on earth but again like if you Mate, don't he's understand smoking crack it, though and he yeah i don't surely. know but none of them could have heard to him like but there is oh, loads of shit about is he telling the truth, so that's what I mean. Once you start looking into all this, like... Problem you get into if you start listening to these... Well, not them. Them, because they are mental. Like, that's like saying, you know, David Icke has a point once in a blue moon. Like, nah, he's just, his box has gone. You can't listen to David Icke. You can't listen to fucking yeah, Rem Lazar. Yeah, Bob Lazar, his whole life is just about Area 51. Like, he has de- if he is telling a lie, like, he has dedicated his whole fucking life to that. Yeah, mental people do that, don't they? Yeah, but he was it's a like me dedicating my life to point. esports. I don't you know. know what have I done that for? It's That's hard. mental. Because obviously, like esports know. isn't even real. But if he got a job, but he has to be some level of competent. If you give him a job to, because they have basically proved that he worked there. Multiple people have attested to it. So if he was smart enough and trusted enough to get in, what's the chances of him just immediately box gone? Like the aliens are fucking real. I, people have breakdowns in, in in fields all the time. Not like literal fields, not out yeah. in the fields. I mean, you know, in, in, in a profession. You know, you have people have breakdowns all the time. Just going to work, quietly doing their thing, and then just one day. Remember, David Ike, he had a fucking meltdown on, uh, it, was on it was on telly, wasn't it? When he when his box first went. I don't uh, really, and he, yeah. he, he was a football, com- he was doing some football commentary. And he basically declared himself the son of God. You know, so okay, no. just at work one day. Oh, by the way, guys, got something to tell you all. I'm Jesus, like you know, which I, I have started doing that as well. <laughs> so it's not a good sign, is it? Really, there, there's all these comparisons. Um, but obviously, I'm doing it ironically. If I, if I ever come on in the outfit, in the Jesus outfit, I did grow <laughs> my hair, didn't I? Yeah, so there was that. Uh, come back, I'm back, back from the dead. I'm actually. Again. I had I had Griff make um, how's this for mental? Griff's designing me an esports Jesus T-shirt for the merchandise store. <laughs> Mate, they'll sell like hotcakes then. <laughs> they'll sell yeah, like hotcakes. Yeah, to you, you bad cunts. You can wear one a day. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You and Duncan maybe. wearing them every day, different colours. Mate, I guarantee. I guarantee. Right, like soon as they go on the store, I'm gonna do a hundred thieves style merch drop. <laughs> Get you, Dressed as Jesus, maybe, but only for only for banter. My box hasn't gone. <laughs> be like, be like courage and go. Like, you gotta no. get him, man. If you don't get him, and then you go, I guarantee they'll sell out. I'd rather stand at a bear trap, mate, than wear an esports. Oh, everyone else should buy one, like, but fuck it, esports. Jesus, but let's be real, mate. Yeah. Come on, where am I wearing our like esports, Jesus, mate? You can wear that everywhere. Esports events. That's esports your, yeah. themed <laughs> weddings esports bars yeah see while you're you watching that's... esports in in the cinema in the dark when no one can see it <laughs> alone you can you're wear wearing it alone. alone wear it in bed <laughs> also alone if you're wearing that <laughs> yeah loads just loads of places <laughs> you know so <laughs> i think they're gonna sell like hotcakes you'll see you'll see right, right, anyway do get them everyone buy one yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nobody fantastic. make fun of me, whatever. Um, right, where should we start? Let's go from, uh, you know, we don't talk a lot about UFOs and, and, and all that on the show. That's not been a recurring thing, although it might be. 
uh, moving should be, forward. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe we should just do our own podcast about it. Nice. <laughs> Richard, Sammy Sam Bravo and Richard Jones. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just big out of our brains. Like, <laughs> listen, man. Look um, into it, bro. Yeah, check it out, man. Um, th- th- some of these are really old because I scripted this show ages ago, so apologies, but we'll make it work. You know, just forget the dates, guys. We're going to bring you up to date by doing as many episodes of I Hate it Here as we- me and Sam can reasonably tolerate. Because I've realized esports content's pretty lame. Let's just talk about this. The Let's goals. just make this popular. Yeah, seagulls. And our other topic, beans. beans I don't know if you saw this in the news. segment, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's we, maybe we even have we even have a beans emote, don't we, on the on the um on the channel, don't we? So, so this happened this happened in March. So that's how far back some of this goes. But there was a headline in the Sun, the greatest of uh, papers. Fuck the Sun. Yeah, obviously fuck the Sun. Um Heinz is in a post Brexit standoff with Spain over baked bean shipments. Sources say the Spanish government want to know the secret spice mixes ingredients grow up in as order... if they're asking for the fucking crabby party formula like grow uh, up right, right uh because they need to know if it meets import requirements on uh i just think on... they put it in there right. cocaine oh what I do you mean does it import requirements so heinz I mean, are too the much best... pepper in there like heinz are the best beans like that's Heinz outrageous. won't reveal their uh, uh, secret and hopes the UK government will intervene. <laughs> of course they will, though. You know. Yeah, middle will. of a COVID crisis. Uh, Poor joke. And you saw our fucking beans uh, out. Yeah, that cotton Heinz beans is totally uh, un British. We will defend the source. Yep. Um, this led to a temporary uh, ban <laughs> in, in Spanish stores on Heinz beans. They stopped selling them for a bit. And uh, as you can see here, the son interviewed an expat who said, this is the quote, we can't get hold of any. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? I can't what get behind beans. Moron, man. What's going on? Yeah, th- that's not even real. The also, have you ever heard the internet? Like, uh, I'm sure you could just yeah. ship them in. What? But... Yeah, you're just walking around in Spain, red-faced Where's moron with a hanky, yeah, with a hanky <laughs> on his head. <laughs> Where's my beans? What's <laughs> going on? I went, I've been to five shops and I can't get fucking Heinz beans. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, a source told the son, Heinz is going to tell them where to go. Big beans oh. are a true taste oh, of go British on the Heinz, like. Yeah, the, yeah, Heinz, that Heinz notorious British company. Go, like. Mate, you do realise, right, uh, that Heinz, historically... To say it's a true taste of British life when it was it was made by a German immigrant living in Pennsylvania. It, it's got you know it's a British How did, boil if beef. That's true. How have America fucked up their beans so much? Like why are American beans are way over yeah, the top? Americans Americans can fuck up a wet dream. Just fucking <laughs> you know? smothered in like broke. Remember mate, remember when we bought them bushes beans and it had. Bacon I like bushes in beans. There. Yeah, but it had bits of bacon in there, but they made me yeah. ill for weeks. It, it didn't make you ill for weeks. I'm still ill now, but <laughs> I'm still ill now, but I'm telling you, but why? Because the bit mate, it was me. I don't know, but it's like rubber cheese, but bacon recipe. Like it was fucking grotesque, but I was uh, I was proper spewing shit in for days after that. Like I'd never touched a bushes I... bean ever since. I think that's just pirate. I think you've got record no, of something mate, else. And blame the beans. You can't be putting big mate, pork in a tin. Of course you can. Pork in a tin, like. Yeah, have you ever up. seen them? Have you ever seen them f- fry ups? Called yeah, the big that's, one. In yeah, a tin? yeah, that's gross. All but that's got bacon in it. Yeah, it's got a pork it's... chop in that thing. Yeah, but that's not for fucking humans to eat, is it? No, obviously not. No, Who's eating a big one out of a tin, like? Oh, I mean, not me, but you do get a mushroom in there. You it's know, it in is spam. Spam's fine because it's got fucking jelly on it, but it's covered in preservatives to make sure. I the ate, I ate aspect oh, you jelly. Don't eat, I ate it as well. But what yeah. I'm saying is, they you know, what I mean? they come like... up with a system. They cover it in fat, or they do something to protect the fucking pork. That was just straight mm. bacon in a bean, mate. It was gross. So anyway, right, B- baked beans, Heinz baked beans, are a true taste of British life. Spaniards love them too. This is outrageous. Is that from Heinz? Heinz uh, a, a source. All right. <laughs> Whatever that means. Who even knows? Basically, the sun has invented a series of quotes <laughs> yeah, right, isn't it? that they think people might have said. At Heinz some is going to tell them where to stick it. Are they <laughs> yeah. 
Heinz said to the Sun, it was work, working closely with UK and Spanish authorities to meet all necessary import requirements. It added specific details of our secret spice mix are not required to ship to the EU. So let me just also show you the duality of man here, Sam, right? Because it, it, this was a big deal on the Sun comments, right? Fuck it now. I, I picked out some of the best. All right. Sun comments, right? You can imagine. Type of person, right? Ian Kelly on the forum. He's immediately gone. He's immediately gone to conspiracy theories. They have eat they means the Spanish here. He's not he's not having none of it, mate. They have eaten them before Brexit with no problem. So why the interest now? Nothing in the recipe has changed. Just the EU being ridiculous and rolling out <laughs> some more of their beloved red tape. Just don't sell to them and look elsewhere. If they gave away what their secret source is, how much do you want to bet there'll be a Spanish copy on the market before long? <laughs> so he thinks Big anyway. Bean, he thinks Big Bean is working in cahoots, right? With, with the, the fucking government. Spanish government. To get a copy of Heinz Beans on the market uh, uh, at a cheaper price. We've got Branson on the phone, sir. He's got an offer yeah. for you. <laughs> Listen, well, we, we just put water in Heinz mixture. That's <laughs> <laughs> all, all we do. You've got to find out what's in that sauce. Yeah. Um, so there was that. Meanwhile, there was a, a much more extreme take uh, on, on the same forum in the same chain of, of, of comments. Um, this one simply said, um, well, first, a uh, shout out to Ken Haslam. There's a big factory at Wigan in Lancashire. You can see it off the M6. Cheers, Cheers. Ken. Cheers for that bit of information. Not relevant to the discussion at Tall all. guide Ken, like. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, like. He has got a point. Mate, I looked it up. He's right. If you're He's interested in beans, you yeah. can see the bean factory to your right on the M6. But Peter Mendes saw this as being indicative. Fuck you know, like, <laughs> I didn't even read so, that. Yeah, Peter Mendes saw it as being indicative of the decline into fascism. European Union renamed as the fascist states of Europe. <laughs> but I can't get my Heinz beans. <laughs> Bloody fascists. 28 likes for that. Also, don't they realise that, all right, if they if Big Beans work with the Spanish government and they leak the secret formula, all that means is you're going to get Heinz quality beans for a lower price? Why Why are you fucking dying? Why are you dying on the hill of should, Heinz? Like? I know. You should want to leak the recipe. Yeah, so you get cheap the, beans. Yeah, no. No one ever thinks about the cheap beans, Sam. No one thinks ahead. Outrageous. They just like the labels. Ooh, it's blue. It's like Jaffa cakes, mate. I like the f mm. Jaffa cakes. They had the fucking, the, the, you know, the original cake. And then when people mm. started remaking them, they made them better than normal Jaffa cakes, mate. Jaffa cakes got fucked. People buy the cheap ones now because they're just better. Heinz are going to get taken I, over, mate. I'll be honest. You know, I haven't had a Jaffa cake in a while, like. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do remember having some, like, knockoff. Like, which were just called, I don't know. Satsuma cakes or something. Or orange cake, yeah. So like, yeah, or orange cake, yeah. And, and it was all right, mate. It was good. The difference is, mate, the fucking the official ones, they only put a small orange slice in the middle and they leave cake around the outside. The cheap ones, they could put orange all over it, mate. Full orange coverage. That's yeah. the fucking cheat code. Like, they got them beat yeah. there. While we're talking about Spain, I got a fucking story. This is outrageous. Now, I, I've read a lot about Spanish culture, Spanish history. One of my favorite works of journalism is uh, Death in the Afternoon uh, by Hemingway, uh, which is all about the history of bullfighting in Spain and the differences and, you know, super fascinating read. Um, how it's kind of like, you know, it, it's inextricably tied to the history of the of the country because obviously yeah. as certain regions are divided and certain you know the the papacy even get involved at one point it's one of the maddest stories of all time the bulls would win because bulls are quite intelligent you know like mammals and that and yeah. what would that what would happen is if a bull survived like 50 fights because you didn't always kill the bull at the end right if a bull survived yeah, 50 that kind fights, of ruined the old fucking sport really like 
Yeah, I what's totally. A, how do I? How does a bull win? Then you mad cunt. Mm. What's what, you know what I mean? What's not a bull used impressive. to win That's what on I mean, the ring. Yeah, because yeah, what would happen is, right, you put a bull in a ring, right, and you put it in with a matador, and let's say the matador's not very experienced, and he's like, bur, 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 and he's doing all his bits, because you, you have to make it near miss yeah, you. you. have to make a show, yeah. Yeah, you have to make a show of it, right? And originally, it was a contest between man and beast. That was what it was. That was what yeah. the thought process behind it was. And so, But what would happen is these bulls would get so smart and so wise, they'd be like, that cunt's fucking doing that thing the other cunt did. And it would just gore them to death immediately. So they'd put like a young matador What's in there. That? Step to the left, are you yeah. going to Step to the left, oh. Oh, lay. Have some of that, you cunt. And they would fucking wreck them and they'd be Get killing. Get fired by a bullet. Like, yeah, disemboweling fucking 20-year-old men. And they'd be bleeding out on the sand. And so... The Pope, at the time, I can't remember which one it was, picked one of their funny fucking names. Francis know. or Vincent or something like that. Oh, no, but this is back in the day, so this would be like Pope Vinicius the yeah. third. Yeah, More you know, they, all ad they all adopt a name when they go in. And basically they said, like, you can't have this. It's because it speaks, first of all, it's an insult to God because we're made in his image. So if we're losing fights to cows with horns, that's not very good, is it? Makes God look like a bit of a twat. And so, also, you know, horns and that. Oh, Santa Maria, El Diablo, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Fucking people don't like it because it's like the devil's winning in the ring. Yeah. So they basically said, right, no matter what fucking happens now, you kill that fucking bull at the end. Oh, really and good. so it changed from being a, con a, a, a contest between man and beast to being an oper the operatic death of the bull. And so that's what happens, you know. Now the bull always dies. It's just how many licks does it get in before it goes down? You have all them people coming in. What yeah, they I know. The, stabbing the pompadours, it. Yeah. stabbing it in the sides. And so all I mean, that. it's fucking horrible. This is, I, if it was like you said at the start, where you go in with a fucking towel and you unleash a bull, you don't stab it. Then fair fucks, like, because it's not like the guy's battering the bull. That isn't the game. Like how many uppercuts you can land on yeah, a bull. Yeah, it's yeah. just don't die. So like, if you just did that, yep. it's not as cruel. So like, oh, well, hang on, the bull's winning. No, well, yeah, he is. You mad cunt. That's the old yeah. competition, isn't it? Oh hey, look, that guy's come back. I knew he would come back, but our our word uh, our. Abuse filters are working every time. Same guy, 200 accounts or something on Reddit, all trolling me for two, three years. Every time a stream turns up and tries to post homophobic or racist abuse, but can't get past the filters. Does it every time. Your life is awful, mate. Your life is awful. It, and, you know, you fail every time. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I, the whole thing with, with Spain is, you know, I, I love it out there. I've been going to Spain for years. Love the culture. Love the language. Uh, but I saw a story last month and I'm not going to fucking say anything about Spain, but it did, it reminded me of all the bullfighting culture and how these great matadors adopted. Cause also as well, like part of it, the matador, that one had to sort of craft an identity for himself. Like Hemingway's talking about this old matador who's big fat yeah. guy. And his gimmick would be he would suck his own belly in. Right. The so it's like past. it's basically like wrestling. You have to make yeah. a fucking character. Yeah. You have to have some key fav. You have to like play it up. Now, that's fine with that stuff. Bullfighting and that. You know, not that I'm for that. I don't like cruelty with animals in general, but you know, talking historically. Um, but this is just mad. This story, right? A volunteer fi firefighter, right, went out and started a massive fire in northern Spain because he wanted the challenge of putting it out because he wanted to see if he could. I don't know. Oh, pretty mental, like. So this is the... Uh, and when, when asked about it in court, he said, I just did it to satisfy my ego. I'll, I'll, I'll read you this. A volunteer firefighter who sought to satisfy his ego by using petrol to start a blaze that devoured 144 hectares as of a forest fire, and firefighter land. as well, of course, he decides to do it in the fucking forest. Like, like come yeah. on, man. Yeah, well, that's what he wanted, see? Because uh, he knew it would be a lot harder to put out. Uh, he saw basically all them ones going on in America and thought, why, why don't we ever have these out-of-control bushfires? I'll, I'll start one and see if I can put it out. Um, so this is uh, Luis Trueba, the former head of the Civil Protection Volunteer Service in Ramales de la Victoria, Cantabria, has denied deliberately setting the fire, uh, had denied it initially, 
but insisting instead he rushed to the scene because he was the first one there, right? Which is obviously mad suspicious. Like, massive fire happening. All the firefighters turn up. What are you doing here? I just saw it quicker than y'all, didn't I? Yeah, just ready me. Like, I was out. I was camping. <laughs> um, but then prosecutors argued that he had touched the land to satisfy his ego so he could play a leading role in extinguishing the fire on its front line. The provincial court was told that Trueba's behaviour immediately before the fire was suspicious, as was the fact that he returned to base afterwards and took a petrol can out of the driver's side of the vehicle, which he then tried to hide. Now, probably just going to go out on a limb here and say... He's not a master criminal, is he? Right? <laughs> right? He's not a master criminal. Also a criminal, dog shit he? firefighter. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like, come yeah. on. Yeah, he has failed on multiple fronts. I wanted to satisfy right? my ego. Mm. My ego was destroyed shortly after. I could not <laughs> fire. Um, hours before the fire began, Trueba and a colleague were on a, uh, on a patrol after a fire risk alert was declared in the area. <laughs> probably by him his co-worker Trueba had looked at the land and said it's really dry it just needs someone to take a match to it and see whether they'd have to crack know. out the fire hydrants a fellow volunteer also told the court the accused liked fires and was like a junkie after his fix when it came to finding them Definitely an investigate... volunteer then. What the fuck goes he slipped through the cracks? Yeah. Like and, uh, yeah, a bit of ma basically an arsonist. <laughs> an yeah. arsonist firefighter. I joined the firefighters, man. Yeah. An arsonist firefighter. Imagine that, like. Um, an investigation was launched after the fire burned through 144 hectares, which is about 356 acres, of eucalyptus, gorse, bramble, scrubland, and pasture in the Sierra de Alcoma on the 17th and 18th of February back in 2019. And although Trueba claimed to have been delivering chairs to a cousin who lived elsewhere... <laughs> delivering chairs? Yeah. What mate, is that excuse? Mate, that's an hell of an alibi, because it's so mad... Well, you have to. Well, you have to understand about criminal alibi, Sam. They always go for something obscure because they think, oh, it's you know. too specific. I can't. Yeah, it's too that specific. Up, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, so there you go. Like, what were you doing on the night of the fire? Delivering chairs. Chairs. Your cousin has no chairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you just been sat on cushions and that. So anyway, but the the GPS in his regional government vehicle in a government put him at the scene well, of the fire. Yeah, yeah. Mate, he's, been, he's, he's a mess, like. Using petrol as an accelerant on the ditch on the left-hand side of the road from Ramales to La Alcoma, he set fire to the land in at least seven different points with a distance of 65 metres between each so that the fire could spread easily. It dismissed his alibi as an incredible excuse, adding, in the court's opinion, there is ample proof of the crime beyond any reasonable doubt, and the fire was started directly, intentionally, and voluntarily. Trueba was found guilty of starting a forest fire of considerable seriousness, <laughs> sentenced to three and a half years inside, in order to pay a fine of 3,600 euros and damages of 158,000 uh, euros. So he'll be working that off in, in the salt mines of Spain for three years. So there you go. Uh, don't let your ego get the better of you and burn half your country down. Don't do that. Uh, now, look, the other thing uh, that was pretty mental, because uh, it's not just firefighters and egotistical narcissists out there. What about parents? Uh, parents uh, get really super competitive about certain things. You know me, I don't like the breeders, Sam. I've always <laughs> spoken openly about that. Don't like it. And then after post-breed, you know, you get those, like, parents who go mental trying to do everything for their kids. And one of the biggest things is, like, you know, getting into the school they want, getting them, you know, into, like, teams and, yeah. you know, extracurricular extra stuff. There you go. Jinx. Yeah. Yeah. Um so this was another story that it's just it's just mad mate uh it, this is a story uh about a woman who created deep fake videos uh, of rivals to the school cheerleading squad and spread them around oh, i saw this this is fucking mad this this is this is like a level of fucking depravity this is like what i deal with on a daily basis in esports actually um so here's the story. 
Uh, police arrested a 50-year-old Bucks County woman on March 4th for sending her teen daughter's cheerleading coaches fake photos and videos depicting her rivals naked, drinking, or smoking in order to get them kicked off the cheerleading squad to create space for her own daughter. 50 years old, by the way. 50 yep. years old. 50-year-old. 50-year-old. Uh, Rafaela Spawn of Chalfont was charged with two misdemeanors. The fact that this is a misdemeanor is sort of mad. staggering. Hilltown Township Police Officer said, Spawn is facing three counts of cyber harassment of a child and three counts of harassment. An investigation last year led officers to discover that Spawn had sent harassing text messages directly to the teenagers before she started creating the deep fix. As the investigation continued, more and more teenagers came forward who were all part of a traveling cheerleading group, the Victory Vipers, based in the Doylestown area. <laughs> Fucking uh, Doyle. Yeah, appropriate because this bird is a corked up Doyle, for sure. Hmm. Spawn last year created the doctored images of at least three members, according to the affidavit. There were no indications that Spawn's daughter knew what her mother was doing. The teenagers told Spawn sent them manipulated images and in anonymous messages said that Spawn urged them to kill themselves, uh, according to the district attorney, Matt, Matt Weintraub, to, uh, in, in a statement given to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Like... This, this, is, this is a different... Let me get it right. It's a different cheerleading team. I assume... Is your daughter on another no, one? So, no, so they wanted... I think I think the reason she was doing it was uh, she wanted to get those people off the cheerleading squad so she would have a more prominent role in right. that cheerleading okay. squad she was a member of. Fucking mental. So, yeah. Oh, totally bo box gone. Um... Hilltown police ended up being contacted by one of the teenager's parents in July, and then two more families came forward with a similar story. They told officers they, they, they and their coaches received text messages that depicted them naked, drinking, and smoking a vape, according to the Philly Inquirer. Some of the teenagers were sent photos of themselves in bikinis with accompanying texts saying the subjects were drinking at the shore. Uh, the videos were analysed and detectives were able to determine that they were deep fakes, digitally altered but realistic looking images created by mapping the girls' social media photos onto other images. Whoa, Officers then were able, able to execute multiple search warrants that then allowed them to trace the text messages back to Spone's IP address and then eventually her cell phone. George Rattel told the Philly Inquirer he believes the harassment was triggered after he and his wife told his daughter to stop hanging out with Spone's daughter due to concern over the girl's behavior. I didn't know it would push it at this point, uh, Rattel said. As a dad, I was pretty upset about it. It's an image put out there of my daughter that is simply not true. So there you go, mate. Fucking, Fucking what a mad bitch. <laughs> also, you know, I know they say don't judge a book by the cover, but that that picture, mate. Yeah, let me show it again. <laughs> it's such a mental picture, like. <laughs> you know what I mean? She is like, is she is the bad. final boss of Carindom, you know. <laughs> that is Rick. like, yeah. Like, come on, man. Mate, her foundation, she's put it on her hair as well. You can see around <laughs> her face, her hair is the same colour as her head. Like, It is just like the fucking... Slapped it on. Yeah, she lives in a cave with the bones of all the lesser Karens strewn around just to sleep in a pile Mate, of just say, apology like, letters. If you put your hand right now, Chad, put your hand over her eyebrows and down, isn't that Bill Clinton's forehead? Wait, what? Put your hand over her eyebrows and oh, cover her mate, face. Yeah, That's Bill Clinton's yeah. forehead. Like. That is Bill Clinton's forehead. Like, she has got Why, Slick Willie's she forehead. Shot, like. She shot Bill Clinton's head onto herself. Mate. I don't admit, no, no, no. That's just, she's just got lucky, I guess. It That's is a mental. fine forehead. Like, See, how have you pulled that like, out? I just, because I was looking, I was like, ooh, does that look like? And then I covered the face. Like, that's <laughs> just Bill Clinton. Like, that is Bill yeah, Clinton. Like, yeah, but how. How have you? How, why are you a forehead spotter? Like, what is that? Like, what is that? What mad talent is that? 
but yeah, you have you have absolutely nailed it, mate. I like put it this way: I'm scrolling like you know back in back in the day when I first started using the internet, and you would be on dial up, and a picture would go like yeah, eh, eh, scroll eh, down, eh. Yeah. You scroll down. Like if you do that, mate, I'm going. Eh, 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 eh. Um, it's Bill Clinton. Like oh wait, what? <laughs> yeah, why is Bill Clinton for foundation on? Like yeah, it's a giga Karen instead. <laughs> Mate, I'm not gonna lie, she could also be gold dust, like, just because. Fucking like, <laughs> <laughs> put the suit in her and send her out, like. Oh, mate. I can just picture her. Yeah. Maybe, it, maybe as a fitting punishment, someone should make a deep fake of her as gold dust. <laughs> that'll, that'll teach you. Uh, you know, you shouldn't do that. I'll tell you what, just as an aside, right? Because, I mean,. <laughs> that's like just a mad horrible story anyway like that that a 50 year old woman would do that to teenage girls is like startling to me but nothing should surprise me um what you know what do you think of all these deep fakes got me fuck. nervous mate yeah got the me thing nervous is, mate. they're not that good to the moment like but they they will nah, be. I, yeah, I, they i've will seen be. some that are mad already yeah. did you see that tom cruise one the guy who does the magic yeah, trick with tom yeah. Cruise. that's good that mate i i don't know i feel you can still tell though it's good. Well, yeah, because he's made himself look like young Tom Cruise, not old Tom Cruise. Yeah. There's That's the only reason you can tell, because Tom Cruise don't look like that no more. There's a guy on YouTube, this like an older guy, he's an actor, and he did a thing where he does impressions. So he did, like, the impressions yeah, of everybody. Yeah, saw that. Did, figure, it's saw like that a Christmas too. carol or something. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, it, it's... It's frightening to me. Yeah, when the future uh, is basically you can't believe your own eyes and ears anymore. Yeah. That's when shit gets rough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 a mad one, mate. It's a mad one. Um, but no, like, they're already doing something that's so fucked up beyond belief in that estates are now signing off on dead actors being in movies. Yeah. We've talked about that. That can't be allowed to happen. That can't become the norm. It was bad enough when they fucking CGI'd what's his chops, Peter Cushing. In Rogue One. Yeah. Do you see that? Uh, and he, and it didn't look Star good. Wars one, like, but... it, was, it was... It was... That the, is I Star Wars, to... right? Rogue One? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. And you, you can't be CGI in the dead. In, and they brought... Film. Oh, yeah. Someone in chat. Then they bring Carrie Fisher back from the dead as well. I've No, I think she'd recorded her scenes. Didn't they? But I swear they, like, hologrammed her, like... The bit where she flies through space is really bad, but I think that was a recording from an earlier bit. Nah. It just looks it just looks shonky because yeah. it was like, mate, what people don't remember about the original cinematic cut of Gladiator, because Oliver Reed fucking died halfway through, pissed out of his mind, arm wrestling Latvian fucking sailors. He um and he's and he's, he just popped. He fucking there's a scene where he's walking past all the gladiators going in one of you today. Well and he's so pissed. He fucking stumbles and they've had to like digi they had to yeah. leave it in. They've had to leave it in and sort of digitally explain it. They had to put like a foot there or something because you know, <laughs> he, he, they, they couldn't record any more scenes. Cunt was dead. So mm. So yeah, just just a mad one. Um but here's the other one. This'll 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 blow your mind. There was uh, another deep fake story uh, that that happened at, at the same time. And this one, I think a lot of Coomers got deeply upset by this one. Uh, here it is in Vice. This was a story about a Japanese biker, right? It was a young girl out there riding a bike, um, and you know didn't reveal anything about herself. She was just a good-looking girl with a motorbike in leather gear. And it turned out to be a 50-year-old man with a face up the yeah. whole fucking time. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> Mate, look at the difference. I but, know. like, I've, you know, we've all been catfished to a certain degree. Like, well, that's outrageous, <laughs> mate. Can you even imagine? Like, <laughs> can you even imagine? Hey, dedicated to the air, though, fair play. Like, you did dedicate the air. Oh yeah! Oh, oh, he looks. It, or is it a wig? Like, no, I think that's his real barnet. Like, fair play. Like, you got a lovely, lovely head of hair on him. Oh yeah, it's like, and, and you know, listen, fair play when committing for the bit, right? I, I'll read you the story. This is just bonkers, mate. Flashing a youthful grin in various selfies with a twinkle in her eyes, she was known to thousands of Twitter followers as a beautiful biker documenting her life in Japan. 
That was until recently, when the true identity of this thrill-seeking young woman was revealed. He's actually a 50-year-old man with face up on his phone. <laughs> the mysterious biker known on Twitter as Azusa Gakuyuki was exposed on the Monday Late Show, a popular Japanese variety show, where hosts discuss the hottest and wackiest topics across the country. The production team had apparently tracked the biker down and found, instead of a bright-eyed young woman, an almost equally bright-eyed middle-aged man. The unnamed 50-year-old admitted in the show he used his face app, the photo editing tool that can drastically alter one's appearance, including their age and gender. He has been using it to turn himself into the Twitter-famous biker chick and even gamely demonstrated his process on TV. He apparently resorted to this kawaii Ugh, feel dirty <laughs> saying that persona for the social media popularity if a girl like her existed anybody would go crazy for her right he said on the tv show his face might have been altered to an unrecognizable degree but that glorious golden mane is true. all his it's all real it is true like that is true like even before the shocking reveal on national television twitter users had already pointed out a suspicious detail in the photo that the biker had tweeted out on february 11th the photo meant to show off the back view of a motorcycle also captured a reflection <laughs> of the bike side mirror. A man who looked nothing like the woman fronting the Twitter account. So there you go. Look at all these. This is the heartbreaker for me. This one. Hang on. This is the real heartbreaker. This picture of side by side. What could have been, Sam? <laughs> Imagine. I, I like the uh, reactions from that TV show, like the guy on the left. Uh, imagine, imagine your waifu for life who turning out to be. <laughs> I'm to play, what guy's taking it well. You look at him, he's cheesing while they're holding up the comparison oh, yeah. and pictures like cheese. But yeah, that's just, uh, you know, this, this text fucking frightening now. I don't know why people fuck with it. I say it all the time. Just go back to being Alex Jones for a bit. You're basically training government fakery i'm convinced all these tech oh, you're training everything yeah you're just training yeah. AI in general i never so do it it gets better never see me doing one of these haha <laughs> this is what i look like no it's not you're not you're not making a deep fit because i'm gonna wake up one day this is how my story's gonna end i'm gonna wake up one day and someone's gonna go oh, we finally got the footage from backstage at dream Hack. and it's gonna be me being absolutely outrageous <laughs> and i'm gonna go that's not real that's a deep fake and no one's gonna believe it or it'll be something worse people will you know Blowing it's myself or something. <laughs> Fucking just put that out there. <laughs> but the thing is, they've got to have source footage, like, so they'd have to have a video of someone. No, Dreamhack. think about it. Haven't you seen that fucking movie, Capricorn One? With OJ, I mean, I know OJ. I haven't, but. Not a popular thing. You know what it's about? Like, they fit no. the moon, like, Mars landings, isn't no. that? Because they didn't want to make it too on the nose. Basically, what they'll do is they'll get a guy to act it out. They'll get a guy who looks like Lord's <laughs> yeah. build, a guy who looks like my build. They'll go backstage at that venue with Dream Act, make it look like an event's going on. Well, they fake my head on it. You'll have to get a Hollywood agent to listen when the auditions are coming out. And maybe if you're lucky, they'll let you play yourself. No, <laughs> brilliant. Today, the part of Richard Lewis will be played by Richard Lewis. Yeah, fantastically. Mate, I'm fatter than I was back then. It won't even look real. Yeah, we'll fix that in CG. Oh, that's true, yeah. You can see the we'll my way Yeah, good. Thin me up, mate. <laughs> Did see, mate, some cheeky cunt left a comment on a video from like 15 years ago saying, yeah, he's aged pretty badly, hasn't he? It's like, <laughs> mate, 15 years? That's a long time. It's not that bad, is it? Fucking hell. Unreal. <laughs> Morrissey's let himself go. I know, I know fucking Stuart Lee's pain now. So anyway, deep fix or go go. Uh, what else have we got? Um, this is just. This is just some stuff that happened. Uh, obviously, we've all been using Zoom, haven't we? We've all been using Zoom. Uh, now, I know everyone saw this because it went massively viral, but I'm committing it to I Hate It Here History. And there's two other follow-on stories. This is back in February. That's how old this is. This was... Everyone's been using Zoom for everything. You know, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're doing important stuff. <laughs> you know, and you have to use fucking Zoom. Even today, story... The CEO of Zoom says he has Zoom fatigue. <laughs> he can't even be asked with it. It has got really ridiculous and boring. Like I'm doing all my meetings on Zoom. I'm watching UFC with people on fucking Zoom. Like I long for the days, you know, like say I went to a bar on fucking Friday and finally allowed out again, allowed out the house if they're outdoors in Britain. 
you know, can't hug anyone. That's banned still. <laughs> can't hug anyone, but can have a drink, can have a pint. Fucking hell, I was gagging for it, mate. I went absolutely insane. I don't even remember the night. Well, fuck it. We just had to get done, didn't it? Get the first one out the way and have a big one. But everyone's doing everything by Zoom. Uh, and this, of course, was the big viral clip of a lawyer who had to tell a judge in what will now be forever publicly available legal documents that he wasn't a cat <laughs> um, <laughs> because he had the cat filter on. So uh, you can watch this video here. Uh, do you want to three to one this? Yeah, go on. Three, yeah, go on. two, one, go. Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. The eyes, man. <laughs> Where? You might want to... Where's uh, the filter? Uh, take, take we're trying look. to. We're, tr can we're you trying. Hear me, I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the... it is, and I don't know it how is. to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's. I'm here live. That's not. I'm not a cat. <laughs> I'm not a cat. <laughs> I can. I can see that. Um, <laughs> I think if you click the up. Arrow next how, how can you be asked? Like, uh, how can you be asked? Actually, as a lawyer saying, I'm, I'm not here, a cat. I'm ready yeah. to go, and I'm not a cat. This, it's so fucking embarrassing, mate. But that wasn't the worst of it. There was a ton of other stories. Like, what's this one here? Um, this, uh, is this the is this the right one? Yeah, here you go. Um, this guy, fucking more idiocy. You know, uh, so this guy turned up, he had a suspended license and he had to pay in a virtual uh, court hearing, right? Because he couldn't go to the court physically. So he did it by Zoom up in it. and did it while he was in the driver's seat of his car. <laughs> oh, like, let, let me let me read you this. They can't see me through this camera, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. Like, what do you think? What do you think the sole purpose of the camera is, you fucking bell end? A Michigan, Michigan, of course. A Michigan man, it could only be Michigan or Florida, probably. A Michigan man who had his license suspended appeared in virtual court while sitting in the driver's seat of a vehicle. It happened this week in the same court where the same prosecuting attorney spotted, spotted an alleged assault suspect in the same home with the victim during a virtual court appearance. The man was being sentenced after pleading to no insurance and driving with a suspended license in March, but he was sitting in the driver's seat of a car during the hearing. I believe you drove wherever you are in the vehicle you're in, and you're dumb enough to go on video with you sitting in the driver's seat of a vehicle. Makes me think you haven't got the message, said Judge Jeffrey Middleton. <laughs> Just been fully wrecked there. The prosecuting attorney asked the court to impose some sort of jail penalty and said the suspect was driving in a Ford Taurus with four adults and three children, one of the children not being in a seatbelt, doing 75 miles per hour on a country road. The man told the judge he was sitting in his boss's vehicle and that he didn't drive there. He said he didn't want to appear in court while at someone's house. He said his boss picks him up and takes him to work. The judge asked him if he wanted to pay fines or go to jail. <laughs> do you want to pay your damn fine or do you want to go to jail? Uh, you have a history of not paying your fines here in St. Joseph County. The suspect then told the judge he, has, he takes care of two kids as a single father and that he could pay it. He was put on a payment plan to pay his fines and was sentenced to serve a two-day jail sentence on the weekend. I Just do it outside. Just do it in your drive if you have to. Yeah. Do it like this. Walk about. This is me walking, judge. Because I can't drive it's no It's like more. if you, you're on trial for arson and you just do it at a campfire. Like, maybe yeah. not, they. <laughs> maybe not, like... Stalking a big one. Yeah. That's probably what that Spanish fella did, didn't it? <laughs> uh, but then there was another one as well. There was this... Uh, this is outrageous. Uh, let me let me find you this one. Uh, this is about a surgeon. Like, some uh, people's boxes have, have just gone. Like, uh, this is... This was a doctor uh, joined another virtual court appearance while operating on a patient. He was in the middle of he was in the middle of surgery. Um, <laughs> so this was a doctor in Sacramento, California, joined a traffic court hearing on Zoom while performing surgery on a patient. 
Scott Green was even dressed in surgical scrubs in an operating theatre when he appeared at his virtual trial on Thursday. When questioned by the judge, Mr. Green said he was happy to go ahead and that he had another surgeon right there who was doing surgery with me. The judge said that that was not appropriate and postponed <laughs> the trial. The Medical Board of California has now said in a statement it would look into the incident, adding that it expects physicians to follow the standard of care when treating their patients. Um, this is the, the quote of the video. Unless I'm mistaken, this is the judge. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm seeing a defendant who's in the middle of an operating room appearing to be actively engaged in providing services to a patient. Is that correct, Mr. Green? Or should I say Dr. Green? <laughs> um, so I don't know why people just think, like, just because it's virtual. You know. I mean, I know doctors are busy, like, but I do that busy, but, like, I really, can't you, like, do it in between appointments at least, you know what I mean? Not yeah. in between surgery, but do it in between consultations, sure. Fuck, you know. Yeah, makes absolutely no sense to me, um, you know, that you would think, like, this rather minor thing, like, just read, if you've got, if you've got a surgeon who's capable there, which, by the way, when you do it, you have a head surgeon and obviously other surgeons around, right, like, you know, if you can take time, because, listen, I've had surgery while I've been awake before, as I've said many times, and let me tell you, those cunts are rocking out, listening to Queen, talking about what they got up to at the weekend, that's why they want you asleep, <laughs> really. Yeah. I mean, to be yeah. fair, I think there's some kind of that. There's a part of that that's good because I don't want them out on edge either. I want them no. to feel calm. You know what I mean? If yeah. if you haven't got to be discussing stuff, sure, have a talk. Like, just make sure you you are concentrating on me. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, but the idea of just turning, I've got a separate appointment. It's by Zoom, so this patient can go fuck himself. Like, while he's on my slab. And, like, if... if no, not vibing with It's that. not even like, oh, you know, I've been rushed into emergency surgery, and you, you go to the Zoom call, like, sorry, mate, I'm in surgery. He goes, like, nah, nah, let's go. Like, <laughs> what, yeah. how about I just piss one if I do? Nah, 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 yeah. I'm just doing it out. Let's piss Yeah, even, even the judge is trying to give him an out. Yeah. And he's going, no, 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 definitely no. Fucking hell. Yeah, I wouldn't want that, mate. I don't want you discussing a fucking parking fine while you're slicing up my vitals. Yeah, especially like. looking, he's looking down the Zoom camera and everything. Like, yeah. like Oh, yeah, fully. Up. All about that life. Like. Uh, it's not just doctors that are mental and, and negligent. Uh, obviously, uh, a, a consistent uh, target, if you want, on, on this show. Teachers, you know me. Fucking teachers. I'll, I'll, I'll say this without getting too into it. I've come out of COVID with just an absolute renewed loathing of teachers. <laughs> Why? I never liked them anyway. Always thought they were too big for the boots, considering what they do. You know, like I love that Norm Macdonald bit where, you know, he's doing a bit like, you know, firefighters running in, you know, to burning buildings, saving lives and, and people go, but teachers are the real heroes, you know. And, it, and then it, there's this famous clip of him dealing with a heckler where a teacher is in the audience. And she's going, yeah, we are real here. She really believes it, you know. Imagine being that fucked up. Yeah. And so he says, well, what, what year do you teach? And she goes, like, fourth grade. And he goes, oh, <laughs> so you need a fifth grade education. <laughs> he fucking absolutely roasts her for 10 minutes. It's brilliant. But anyway, I never liked them. They're, they're full of themselves. You know what a teacher I'm talking about. Considering all the teachers I've ever known on some level have, like, fucked up lives. And, you know, they're all, like, miserable and functional alcoholics. And I've got some mates who are teachers who obviously, you know, I'm willing to give them a pass because I like to believe they're one of the good ones. But I've got one now. He's basically the guy who's trying to go to work and actually teach the kids again while the union are saying, no, 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 you should be on strike. Yeah. He's going, these kids need an education. Like, it's safe. I'm fine. I've already had COVID. I'll go. I'll teach the kids. And they're all going, you're not standing with your union brothers and sisters, like giving him shit for it. You know, so fuck him. Fuck them, all, uh, fuck them coming out of this, like, 100%. Yeah. Um, never liked them. But this, this is just classic unacceptable behaviour. Because have you ever had teachers, right, who would make a point about safety, uh, would do something that was inherently unsafe? You know? Yeah. You ever, right. I had one, right? Mr. Richardson, woodwork teacher he was, and he had, to, he had a bong eye he did. I think it was a glass one, actually. Uh, but it would—it was at 10 to 2 all the time anyway. So either way, you know. And it was hard class to talk in and get away with stuff because you couldn't tell where the cunt was looking at that. 
so you didn't know if he was looking at you or looking somewhere else. But he used to do this thing, like you have a rule when you're in a wood shop. Uh you can't wear a tie. Right? You take a yeah, tie. Get caught, it? Yeah, gets caught. Classic. And so if you ever saw anyone with a fucking tie on, he would just grab them by the tie and pull their face into a fucking machine. Like Well, it's got your tie, it's got your tie, it's got to even do that. <laughs> and obviously kids are fucking shitting themselves. Like, he, would, he would legit do That's that. That's fucking mental. You know, a band saw if it fucking snaps, it's just your face is off, mate. Your your mints. You know, and he would be doing that. He was wild as fuck that guy. I had a science teacher who used to do stuff like that. Used to put, used to fill fucking, you know, if you weren't talking or you left a punch and burner on or something, faking, what was his name? Can't even remember. Might have been Mr. Kerr. Yeah, whatever. Fuck that. Cunt. He used to fucking, like, you know, pretend spilled chemicals and, oh, no. <laughs> the acid's on you. Water, of course. You know, he'd do shit like that. You know, you can't. Be well, at least that one kid. has. At least that one has no actual danger. Whereas pushing someone's face towards a band sort of definitely does. Throwing water at someone is just annoying. Like, but you're in danger of shitting your pants. I guess. You know. Um. So anyway, this story just fucking outrageous. This is former former. You'll notice <laughs> former Illinois teacher convicted of pouring nitrogen. On a what a mad cunt. Right? This is in Wheaton, Illinois. A former chemistry teacher at a suburban Chicago high school has been convicted of reckless conduct for pouring liquid nitrogen on a student during a science demonstration in 2018. Surely on accident. Surely on Look, accident. Oh, no. Listen. <laughs> Listen, Me. a DuPage County jury on Tuesday also found Gary Broderson, 66, guilty of one count of endangering the health or life of a child after a two-day trial. Um, here's the story. Um, right? The student had volunteered to take part in a science demonstration, but did so with the understanding the liquid nitrogen would be poured over his chest area, not his groin. Well, he, mate, even then, you don't put oh, yeah. fucking even liquid then. nitrogen on skin, you mad cunt. Right? Um, the student was lying on his back in a classroom when brought us and poured the liquid nitrogen onto his chest, followed by a much larger amount on his groin. Oh, mate. Left the children, uh, left the child with uh, burns. Uh, around his finger, gro groin, and chest area. Yeah, probably did, didn't it? That was the demonstration. So he said, right? Like, if you're going to do it, you have to put on, like, the, you know, a somewhere it's going to yeah. roll off easily. You can't lay down and pour on their chest and their knob. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, so what he's done is, quite clearly, Mr. Broderson, what he's done is, he said, lie down, I'll pour it on your chest, and it'll roll it'll off. roll off, yeah. Yeah, for whatever reason, I don't even, I wouldn't be doing that, right? But then, for a bit of banter, he's gone, ah, I'll pour it on your dick, your dick's frozen. Hey, yeah, my dick, my is. dick actually is frozen <laughs> now. Like, you have just, you have just frozen a, a child who's in your, you've frozen his penis, like, in front of everyone as well, like, wrecked his knob, like. What, Unless, why? maybe, maybe it was, like, just pour on his chest and he, he's fucked in an accident or something. And no, it's made it you know what teachers are like, right? It's their little moment, isn't it? They have the class there and they're finally doing something funny. Yeah, they're yeah. doing their bit, you know, and he's 66, so he remembers a time from before health and safety. You know, he remembers when the government used to say, smoke yourself slim, fatty, and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> he, don't, he don't give a fuck, does he? So he's there, and the kids are all laughing. <laughs> and the kid's nervous. Oh, it's not going to burn me, is it? And he's going, no, don't worry. Oh, oh is it burn it? you is cold. Yeah. I burn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight burn you. And then what he's done is, he's poured it on his chest, and it's gone like, and all the kids going, oh, wow. And then he's going, hey, what have I got you on your knob? And then he's got him on his knob. Man. Like fully on his knob and his hand. And that, and then the whole, and just imagine the horror in the class now. Kids screaming, ah, burning, knob gone. Fuck, you know. And you're just dealing with that now. And you've got to try and style that out as a teacher and look cool. <laughs> grow, grow up. Grow up. Fuck, you know. Nightmare. Mate, mate, fucking teachers, mate. They can't help themselves. The student has made a full recovery. Uh, you'd be walked pleased to know. Yeah, but he walked it off. And uh, Mr. Broderson has resigned. <laughs> and State surrendered. 
<laughs> it's the way it says this well, this line. Broderson resigned from his position and has voluntarily surrendered his teaching certificate. <laughs> yeah, state the bed to me, I think. State the bed. State the bed yep. to me. <laughs> yep. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. It's been great. It's been an honor. Yeah, thanks. Ta da, ta da. Pat, pat my bags, pat my bags, get the car yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we need yeah, get the cash out the safe. Uh, yeah, Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he says, mate. Just yeah. rings his wife. Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> yeah, operate. Uh, initiate Operation Mexico. Come. Mental. What are you even doing that for? Uh, so, what, what else have we got? Hang on. There's a couple of stories here. Uh, uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta come back to that one because we need some funny ones at the end. Oh, mate, hardcore tragedy, like just random tragedy. I, got, I just, just gotta get this out the way. Just sad, just a sad story. What's happened? Who's dead? Fred, Freddie Mercury's dead, mate. What do you... Yeah, not Freddie Mercury, the legendary singer. Well, Freddie Mercury, the, the seal. I mean, I, I give a little this? bit more of a fuck now. Like, no, you've told me he's a seal, I guess. Mate, it's this is just an awful story. Freddie, no, Freddie, Mer mate, oh me, yeah, oh no, I, can't, I don't even yeah. know if I can show any of these. Like, yeah, yeah, don't show the pictures. Like, yeah, basically, a dog was an owner was walking a dog. Right, so I have to set it up first. So there's this like there there was this local seal, right? Local seal, um, and. It, it was called Freddie Mercury because it used to sing and it had a bit of a moustache, right? And it was well known by all the locals and it was kind of like all bedded in and people used to like, oh, there's Freddie Mercury, the seal and all that, right? Down in London, you know, there's not a lot. There's not a lot. Is there a like in London? No, no one's having a good time in London. So Freddie Mercury, the seal, he was a little bit of light in people's lives. He used to live near the Thames, you know, near the Hammersmith Bridge. People will be walking along going, God, it's shit living in London, isn't it? But there's Freddie Mercury, the seal. So it's all all right. And anyway, this lawyer, and what I love about the reporting here is... <laughs> oh, they have fed her up to be fucking chewed by the wolves, and they? They've swung her up in the sky with an hospital pass here. Like, Oh, what I love about it is they, the way they've just brought in a load of needless class stuff, yeah. right? The... You because she was a lawyer, right, who was walking the dog. And, yeah, unfortunately, Freddie Mercury had to be put down. He didn't even get mauled to death, essentially. He got mauled so badly, death was preferable. Nah, that's rough, right? <laughs> On a seal. Have you seen seals, mate? They're just balls of fat. We're like little flipper limbs. They can't do anything. Yeah. You know. Anyway. Um... Oxford educated commercial lawyer. Said, I'm like, they are just fucking full on throwing at the wolves to me. Oh, fair. isn't like, it like reasons to hate this yeah, person? This uppity right? bitch who killed a seal. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking, have you got a wreck immediately? Like, this ha ha uh, Oxford educated lawyer. Yeah, that's perfect. Like, Oxford educated commercial lawyer. Not just a lawyer, not looking after the little people. Commercial lawyer. All in it for the money. All she cares about is money. Uh, Rebecca Sabin Clare told the Evening Standard she apologised unreservedly for the terrible accident. The high flying legal eagle. <laughs> right, again. Yeah. Also said she wished she had just kept her dog on a leash. F Freddie Mercury's seal orphans wish that too. Very much so. I don't know if Freddie Mercury didn't have any kids. I think he's probably the only seal there, I'd assume. Like, yeah. Sad. The 10 month old seal. He didn't have a good innings, Freddie, did he? As if he's only 10 months, that's not even... Oh, I assume he would have been there for years, like... Mm, too soon. Mate, it doesn't take much to stand out in, in the drab and dreary misery yeah. fest of London. Although that makes sense. I was going to say, isn't it pretty hard to, like, bite the seal to death? There's no point. they got a load of blubber. <laughs> Never like... tried. No, but, I, you know, as an animal, you'd think they got a lot of fucking fat and blubber around them, like, so how do you even, yep. how do you even get through? But I guess, yep. you know, he, he weren't thick enough yet, like... Mm. Um, but yet, the 10 month old seal could not be saved after he was mauled by Sab and Claire's dog near the Hammersmith Bridge on the Thames. It's unclear what breed the dog is. Horrific images, which we can't show, 
uh, captured Freddy being attacked as the woman and four passers by tried to pry her dog's jaw jaws off the marine mammal Aww. who suffered a broken bone, a dislocated flipper, as well as ligament and nerve damage. Aww. Freddy was ultimately euthanized, prompting an outpouring of grief and condemnation aimed at the lawyer. Now listen. Oh, he looks so um, sad, but that's fucking oh, horrible. Well, he knows, isn't he? Um, ten picture, months and so yeah. going. Oh, yeah, it's sad, isn't it? Oh, ten weird. months and he just knows. But like, on, they just said he had nerve. Like, I understand he probably would have been able to live a normal life, but someone must have a seal sanctuary. Who's going to want... Someone could have unfed Freddy. You know how life. this goes down. It's like we're horses and that. We make loads of assumptions about animals in our lives. Have you ever heard people say, right, you know when they put down a horse when it's got a broken leg? Yeah, yeah. And they all go, um, you know, it takes so long for the bone to heal. It's so hard. And the horse gets sad because it can't run and it can't walk. So we just shoot him in the head. Yeah, You're I like, know. hang on a minute, mate. Like, uh, let's, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, let's fucking have a talk about this. Like, I reckon a horse being a bit sad for a year while its bone stitches back together is better than getting fucking domed by the fucking side of a field. Like, like you know, I'm just going to, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's and fucking also, dial like, is it, You're telling me you can, like, 3D print a fucking hard plastic boot to put on a horse's leg so it can still walk and keep the bone straight? The bottom line is what we do as humans, right? We make value judgments about animals every day. And because, you know, I've said this many times. We'll be talking about aliens at the start of the show. We've already got aliens on planet Earth. They're called animals. <laughs> we don't even think to try and communicate with them on any sort of fundamental level. Certainly the ones that are more... You know, intelligent. What have we done? Stick them in cages, stick them in sanctuaries, kill them for fun, kill them for banter, kill them for food. I don't mind farming them. I'm, I'm not vegetarian or vegan. I'm not mental. But, you know, my, my mate had a mad one. He turned vegan because um, he used to love eating meat and seafood and all that. And then he, he watched some documentary about fucking lobsters. Yeah, it wasn't Jordan Peterson. Shit like that. Get them. Yeah, and it was like, you know, these guys live for 140 years and fucking, you don't know what type of intelligence they've got. And it was talking about how, like, they've shown that they have memories and shit like this. Like, and you're just have, you're just boiling it alive in a fucking pot of oil, cause, uh, or water, sorry, because some cunts told you they don't really have nerves, they don't have feelings. What yeah. the fuck do you know? There was what also, you know? what's it called, My Octopus Friend or something on Netflix yeah. recently. The guy seemed like an absolute pretentious cunt, like the guy who made it, I'm not going to lie, he seemed like an they absolute all are. annoying I, cunt. You, you, like, know, you know they all are individually in that world, saving like... the world by stroking yeah. this octopus, but I was like, I don't know, I don't really want to eat calamari, like seems like a waste of a fucking sick animal to be honest, because it's not even like I'm enjoying it, like you're deep fried it in batter, but is it worth killing it for, you know what I mean? Barely yeah. taste it. Yeah, I mean, have, have you seen... Ring. I you ever see that story about that cunt who uh, he, he, he had a laboratory and he was doing an experiment with mice in one room and he was doing an experiment with an octopus in another room and the mice kept going missing. They right. couldn't fucking figure it out. And because you just don't think what could happen, happen. Yeah. And what, what had happened was the octopus had, would climb out. They, they figured it out because they put cameras up to get to the yeah. bottom of the missing mice. And the octopus would climb out of its tank, would walk across the floor, out of water, get into the other lab, Slithering get in with the mice, it. have a mouse, fuck back off to the water before bedtime, no cunts any the fucking wiser. Right? And you're telling me that it's all right just to kill them for banter? Yeah, I know. Nah. So nah. I mean, like, it's not, not, it's at not all even... It. This not might at be, all like, a, a dumb reason, but it's not even a good food, but that's what I mean, like... Pe mm. Most people eat the deep fried, you barely taste it, like, what a waste, but if it was, like, the most delicious, succulent meat, you know what I mean, like, a once-in-a-lifetime experience, you'd be like, okay, I understand why people eat it, but it's it's, it's alright, it's alright, like. Yeah, but have you ever seen that movie Arrival? No. You ever watched that? It's good, you should watch it. It has got fucking generic man Renner in it, you know, Hawkeye from the Marvel movies, he's just so boring, but, but he's, he, you know. He doesn't need to be too exciting in this. But basically, it's probably one of the most nailed on, if you had to sort of conceptualise what it might be like meeting and trying to communicate with aliens. Yeah. Because they don't, they're like octopi in nature, although you don't sort of fully see them. But they, their language is essentially sim symbols, concentric circles. And one symbol tells you like like an unfathomable amount of information right, okay. that's how their language is kind of constructed and you know they say that about octopus or octopus you know they communicate with coloration of the skin yeah. subtle shading differences 
you know, and they can change to any color. They can mimic any surrounding. And is, is it crabs? Want. It's I not think just it a survival is. mechanism, you know. I think it's crabs where they discovered that memories will like pass down in crabs. So like, if yeah. one if one crab learns something and then breeds and then dies, like it's not even like instinct as in like it can be an individual memory to one individual place it, it'll know like say if it got attacked by a fucking eel there well the, that crab's yeah, children don't go when there. it goes there's them, eels. Like, uh, yeah. feel bad about that bro For, like it is fucking yeah. mad the amount of shit we don't understand about the ocean is oh of course man. not just that though elephants i say it all the time think about how we treat elephants elephants are fucking visibly intelligent empathetic creatures that are clearly capable of like language advanced memory emotion oh. yeah yeah elephants graveyards right why is it when i'm old and sick and shit and i don't want to be a burden on the plains to everyone else right say so yeah i'm off to die now i'm off to die in that place where we all instinctively know to go to die for generations i'm off to that now and you can come and visit when it's your turn say yeah say yeah everyone's sad elephants crying like right. what and you're just gonna kill them because you like pianos yeah, what? there's so many of those videos as well, like, about? where an elephant gets stuck in a hole, and humans will help it out, and then the rest of the herd yeah. of elephants will all come <laughs> up, like, celebrating. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's mental, mate. So, this is what I mean. Like, we're not even ready to fucking deal with alien life. We, we don't even sort of have any sort of understanding or, you know, e empathetic intelligence towards the alien life we've got on our own fucking planet. We're mental. So, but yeah, man, I fucking... I'm with you. I, I, there's, I, I think there's some animals that like, we've got to start putting them off limits. You can't just go around. You can't be killing octopuses and squid. But anyway, point of that conversation is they, uh, we, we make value judgments about animals all the time. And basically what it boils down to is if it's a bit of effort to save an animal's life or it's going to cost some money, people can't be asked. No. That's, what it, that's what it all boils down to. Like, Freddy probably could have lived if we're being real about it. Yeah, but they just—I thought, I thought well, it, yeah. it like bit through its neck and it bled out or something. But it says it was just nah. like all nerve damage and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, we just all go... the rich people in London. Mate. This bloody commercial lawyer with all her money, and she's not willing to put up the cash to save Freddie Mercury. Yeah, but probably what happened as well is right. You know, she's distraught, pulled her dog off. She's having to keep the dog away. He wants round two with Freddy while well, Freddy's bleeding out. Yeah. Some cunts call for a fucking vet, right? And the vets rocked up and gone, fucking hell, seals. I don't do seals, me. You know, like they're a fucking yeah. painter or decorator. Plus as well, they're jaded as fuck. They live in London. They're a London vet. They probably have put down a million dogs like just that week, you know, because... Uh, people just treat their dogs like shit and fucking you know you come out and you take one look at it and you go it's a bloody seal i don't do seals me like well, i don't even know what i'm doing here here's what i have got syringe full of the good good fuck it tara tara see ya schmickles 300 quid <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and then turn to the lawyer she better repaid for it mind oh yeah i'll be 300 quid you seal killing bitch <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tara, tara. yeah i was a big fan here's of me Freddy. business card um this is this is where it gets really bad though because just to come back to this lawyer right th this report has done her dirty like i'm just i oh, think I know they have roasted her like keep your fucking dog on a leash and that right and if you can't yeah. get a dog off another dog you shouldn't have a dog right that's essentially what it was if your dog was off a leash it was, it was freddie mercury the seal today could be another dog tomorrow if you're not capable of separating your dog from another dog should the worst happen should a dog off occur you shouldn't have a dog the end because sometimes they do go fucking crazy right that's that right but anyway um let me just uh read you the full thing i'm heartbroken by this terrible accident as an animal lover, I fully understand the dismay that has been expressed. I apologised unreservedly for what happened. In hindsight, I wish, of course, the dog had been on a lead, but at, that, at the time, that did not seem necessary. I'm hugely grateful to all those who helped at the scene. They were heroes. The real heroes. Teachers, they were. I left for my own safety and that of my dog, believing that there was nothing that I could do to help as the seal was being looked after by a vet and help had been called. She peaced out. She left the scene. I, I mean, offered my I bet, contact I bet details. People were screaming, like throwing rotten food and stuff. Boo, see no. you, boo. Uh, right. Anyway, here's the next line. Sab and Claire, who lives in an eight million dollar home yeah, with her right, husband, yeah. said she had reached out to authorities after leaving the gruesome scene. 
Early yesterday morning, I contacted the police to speak to them about the incident and was directed to the RSPCA. The RSPCA interviewed me and they said, look, she's very quick to get this out. They said they were happy that no offence had been committed. Yeah. No. I have made a donation to the wildlife hospital. It's not helping Freddy, is it? Too late. Which treat? Yep, yeah, too late. Too little, too late, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> which treated the seal they might what, be what, what wonderful work it does no that so, wonderful what have they done so well, far they, they fucking zil- zero yeah. one down but zero yeah killed yeah, one that, seal saved zero they're not yeah, fucking that, exactly that, that is yeah that's fair although we to be fair sam we don't have the numbers yeah though, true we don't have the sample size yeah, like but yeah, if yeah, i just to that. judge it off this fucking 100 mm. percent. well yeah if you do judge it on this one episode yeah <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. great is it um but yeah, man, what a what an absolute mess. Just what an absolute nightmare. Um, now listen, I'm obviously against cancel culture. I'm sure this bird had yeah, a fucking she did terrible do it on purpose. Like, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, She's I'm had a good. terrible time. Yeah. That's like just la la la. I'm a commercial lawyer walking yeah. my probably expensive pure breed dog. La la. Can't wait to go back to my eight million dollar home later with my husband in my perfect fucking life. Tra la la. Oh, my dogs killed a local seal that everyone loves. <laughs> you know, yeah. like my dogs kill Freddie Mercury. So obviously she's having a fucking nightmare. Like, <laughs> my know? dogs kill Freddie Mercury. My dogs kill Freddie Mercury. The 10 month old beloved sailor who lives <laughs> under a bridge in Hammersmith. You know, that's bad. Like, she's having a nightmare. Like, and so obvious. Like, I, I bet she got fucking oh, wrecked. Man, you know, she, had a, she probably had a nervous breakdown. That's probably what she left. Because she did say she left her contact details. Yeah. So she didn't just like run away it and run. She just like, here's where I live. I gotta go over. Like, <laughs> she probably was just having a mad breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just, uh, just insane. Just, just insane. Uh, that you know, I don't want her to be cancelled or nothing, but we haven't done a great. Like, that's a collective. Everyone's failed there, haven't they? Yeah, you know, everyone's failed there. I don't. I think Freddie could have been saved. I'm gonna say it. I'm, I'm gonna go to the yeah. wall for that. I, I again, not a vet, like so. I'm not sure how bad the nerve damage. I'm gonna, was. I'm gonna go with my level of expertise <laughs> of none, no expertise over that vet who turned up at the scene. That's what I'm just saying, like, if, if a person gets their arm ripped and they have nerve damage, they do do surgery to try and fix the nerve, like, before they just, well, put him down, mate, you fuck, like, <laughs> like I'm sure there was yeah. something they could have tried, I guess, but maybe it was too low percentage chance to work that they didn't want to be cruel to the seal, who knows? Now, it wouldn't be an episode of I Hate to Hear if we weren't talking about some horrific current event, and what could be more horrific and current than the uh, new spread of coronavirus in India? We don't do a lot of coronavirus stuff on the show, but there's one set of stories in particular that are coming out. India's having a tough time. I've got, obviously, family and friends from India, and, um, you know, they're having a right old nightmare out there now, because not just because of the huge spread, which it looked like was going to be contained at some point, but now they've got the double secret mutation or whatever, isn't it? they got the double, double mutant variant. Yeah. And so people... There's, there was a there was a bunch of reports that were coming out, um, which you know, not great news because um, I didn't even have this ready for the for the bit. Uh, but there was doctors saying they'd been like uh, vaccinated before they went on the front line, and and now there is a genuine concern that this double mutant variant might be the one that somehow slips through. The vaccines, the other vaccines have reportedly been doing fine with the other variants we've had. Brazilian variant, the UK variant. Of course, we had our own fucking variant. We had to, didn't we? Oh, Got that straight away. Man. From London, of course. <laughs> had to be. <laughs> Cockney cunt variant happened. Um, apples but yeah. and pears variant. Yeah, yeah, the apples and pears, mate. But, uh, you know, there was a report uh, um, just uh, a few days ago. I think four days ago um that they, they 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 now believe that this double variant is what's causing so many deaths and a lack of preparedness from uh doctors and doctors even themselves the medical staff this is something that didn't happen in a lot of other places because of the rigorous safety protocols but a lot of doctors and, and nurses are being stricken down with this. And that's what's caused the knock-on effect of the collapse of the Indian health services, which in some parts of India ain't much to begin with, frankly. 
So because India are a, a country where, of course, they have the disparity of wealth, produces the most billionaires year upon year, similarly has some of the most uh, outrageous levels of poverty on planet Earth, uh, which would break your heart if you ever saw them with your own eyes. Um, so tough times in India, but there has been one story that has really come through uh, the last couple of weeks that just shows to me the staggering problems ahead that they're going to have in some of the rural areas in, in dealing with this. And that is that they are essentially, and this has been going on for a few weeks now. In fact, let me find the, the uh, right one. Yeah, that's the one to start with. No, sorry, my bad. Start with this one, actually. Um, they have. There's been a number of people, prominent community figures, religious figures, that are pushing cow urine as the cure. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. And this started uh, end of April. There was a video of a politician, right? You have to think about how mental this is. Um, there, was a, there was a politician, uh, the, the, the Surat General Secretary Kishore Bindal of India's Bharatiya Janata Party. And he said that because of his, you know, belief in, in, in Hinduism, where cows are sacred animals, and also that there was some medical they're efficacy. They're not doctors, to... though, are they? Sacred no. animals, they're not doctors, but... No, no. I don't, I don't think that's in any of the books. Uh, anyway, um, this, they shared a video of, an, of a man who's not been identified or whatever, but he was standing over a woman who literally couldn't breathe. She was intubated, uh, well, on a ventilator, rather, not intubated. Um, and he went up and poured uh, at what was professed to be a vial of cow urine uh, into her mouth and uh, instructed her to drink. Um, this obviously caused some grave concerns and consternation most notably why is a fucking politician sharing that at, at just in the height of a fucking global pandemic where is this notion coming from that cow urine would have some sort of medical efficacy for coronavirus and the outrage led to the politician deleting the tweet um uh and and obviously led to a lot of viral outrage all focused temporarily on india not just because of sort of some common empathy and shared humanity for the global community no it took a video of someone pouring piss in someone's mouth it's to not. even wake up the average american to get you know oh, what's happening over there um but anyway such are the times in which we live anyway that sort of died down um you know, over a couple of weeks, and instead we went to the horrific numbers, but it then reared itself again. This is from India today, uh, just yesterday. Uh, they, they are now, uh, the 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 right, I'll, I'll read you the full article again for, for context. The same political party that that guy was a member of, they've now gone all in on cow piss, double down they, on the piss. They've do they deleted it. Two weeks ago, didn't want to say anything about it, rode out the ridicule. Now they're doubling down on the cow piss. Um, is COVID 19 cases, again, this is, as I say, from India today, uh, as COVID 19 cases continue to surge across India, a Bharatiya Janata Party, that's the BJP uh, a member in U Utah Pradesh, has called on people to drink what is called Galmutra cow urine to defeat COVID 19. Surendra Singh, also put up a video of himself drinking the cow urine to show that he had no reservations about the controversial treatment. Uh, Surendra Singh claimed the spread of COVID-19 can be controlled using cow urine and claimed that the secret to his good health, despite working for 18 hours a day, uh, which he says is all for the people, was that he'd been drinking cow urine for years. He explained that cow urine should be consumed on an empty stomach in the morning. He said two to three capfuls. He's not even sparing them. These, these measures are outrageous, Sam. These are outrageously heavy, big measures yeah. of piss. This is heavy piss. Like He said two to three capfuls of it should be mixed into a glass of water. At least he's diluting it. And gulp it down. He said one precaution should be taken after drinking 
uh, the the cow urine. I don't know what that means. One precaution. Yeah, what's the precaution? Yeah. It, it, it oh, there we go. It. Underneath it says, "Don't consume anything for half hour because you will be oh, sick because right. you're drunk piss." <laughs> I assume yeah. is what the rest of that yeah. quote should be. Uh, yeah. They, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Don't consume anything for half an hour. He said. Uh, Surendra Singh also claimed that not just COVID nineteen, cow urine was a superpower against many diseases, especially heart disease. Surendra Singh suggested suggested that cow urine, if, so, uh, uh, if sourcing it directly, is difficult. He also recommended the consumption of roasted turmeric powder in order to maintain. Well, that's good a health. classic well, one. Turmeric is a. Uh, You've got to have turmeric with your piss. Shot of piss. Yeah. Shot of turmeric. Get it all done. Fuck it. What a mad, what a mad fucking thing to be putting out there as as a politician. Like mad irresponsible shit. That's when we learned that fucking cows actually piss spike proteins, mate. And he was right all along. We just he's well, just drinking the spike proteins, getting ready. Well, listen, it, it it it's also been embraced, as I said, because of the um, iconography, if you like, of the cows as a sacred animal in Hinduism. The, he, he, it's not just that political party that's advocating it for it. There is also something, it's the Hindu Nationalist Party, and they've said, yeah, they've won up to it. They love saying, piss us. Yeah, but they've gone. Now, not just cow urine, cow dung oh, can help as man. well. They've, br they've brought shit to the party, mate. They brought Bro. cow shit to the party. They're like, listen, if it comes out of a cow, it's good for you. It can, it can sort you out. So here we go. Um... Dozens of Hindu activists in India have hosted a cow urine drinking party. I wasn't lying when I said... What's wrong with the milk again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, out of all the liquids, you've gone for piss and shit in order, like... What about milk? Surely milk's first, like, try milk out. Try milk. Have a, have a glass of milk, see how you feel tomorrow. I'll give you a glass of piss if you're still fucking ill. Like, we'll fucking work into it. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you, you, I, I agree. I, I'd probably have the milk first. Like, yeah, you are right. Uh, dozens of Hindu activists in India hosted a cow urine drinking party. Some members of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Hindu Nationalist Party have claimed that cow urine and dung can prevent and cure COVID-19. The chief of the Akhil Bharat Hindu Mahasabha, or the All India Hindu Union group, hosted a cow urine drinking event on Saturday in New Delhi. Me. So they've Hoping. had a group party to stop COVID by drinking piss. Like, come on. Yeah, they've all got together in close proximity to drink piss. Yeah, and they've all done a shot of each other's piss for good luck. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Get in. No, I don't. Yeah. That probably isn't true, but I mean, I suppose. Oh, I meant, you know, prepared. their glass of a cow piss. Oh, their actual yeah, I, piss, you know I, I mean? thought you meant, yeah, they were nah, having nah, it off. You know, a bit of, of back swill yeah. or whatever, like from each yeah, piss yeah. glass. Right. Many Hindus consider the cow to be sacred. Some leaders from Prime Minister's Narendra Modi's Hindu Nationalist Party have advocated for cow urine or its dung for medicinal properties. We have been drinking cow urine for 21 years, and I also take a bath in cow dung. We have never felt the need Said to the man who had lost all his skin. <laughs> <laughs> Said the man who was inside out. Like, what do you mean you've been bathing in shit and drinking piss for 21 years? Like, He's still with us, though. He could have been on jackass if he was in the fucking right place, mate. <laughs> yeah, that, funnily enough, you should say that. It was um, Steve-o. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> steve No, um... We, we have never felt the need to consume English medicine, said Om Prakash, one of the party attendees. Suman Hapria, a legislator in the northeastern state of Assam, told state lawmakers during an assembly session on March 2nd, cow urine and cow dung could be used to treat COVID-19. Meanwhile, medical experts have repeatedly warned. <laughs> <laughs> that cow shit and piss is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, medical experts have repeatedly warned that cow urine and dung, as well as certain traditional medicines, do not cure illnesses such as COVID-19 or cancer. There is no scientific validation that any of these traditional medicines work to prevent coronavirus, said virologist and traditional medicine researcher Deprasad Chattopad here. And that was in the German Deutsche Press agent uh, news group cow dung and urine are waste material true there is no test that validates or proves they are good for us i uh, feel like 
bathing mm. in shit is probably fight like it's not just a mud bath basically i'm sure i mean well i might funny do story for your skin funny story right my uh granddad used to work at the stables and he said and i think i've told you this before he because shit gives off a lot of heat right? yeah yeah and obviously jockeys have got to keep their weight down you know they're tiny anyway they're like manlets aren't they yeah, you know, yeah. like dust moret you know and about that size you know five two is that'd be too big for a jockey in a lot of cases and what they do is they have to keep their body weight down because the lighter you are the obviously, horse, goes, yeah. uh, horse can go faster can't it so what they used to do and i don't know why they didn't just go to a sauna i guess you just couldn't if you were poor but the jockeys used to bury themselves in the shit yeah and the heat would help you just you'd be dripping with i mean you are up to your neck and shit you're probably sweating for that yeah. But yeah, they used to bury him. Used to bury him down in the shit. Apparently, I mean, like, I guess stuff. if you've got a cut, you're gonna be fucked. Like, you're gonna be living in infection. Like, you better have a heavy dose of antibiotics before and after if you're gonna bathe in shit. It was a different time. I think yeah. People Although just... to be fair, I bet there's something to be said of like building an immunity to some of those. Like, you're not just gonna die if you lay in shit for a bit. You might. I don't know. Would do. I feel like aspirin. There are I dangerous remember... stuff in shit, but I don't think it's just gonna insta kill you. Like, you probably get like That's a stomach me. virus or something. I remember one time, I uh, went again. I was on a farm, and uh, I walked up some stairs and like jumped onto what I assumed was like a little hill, so I get down off these stairs, I was carrying fucking hay or whatever you do on a farm. Yeah. But it wasn't a hill; it was a pile of pig shit, and therefore didn't have soil-like properties. Had right. shit-like properties. And my boot, my welly, has gone. <laughs> it's gone in. <laughs> Right, and I'd I'd start to abandon the welly, mate. Oh, what, no, no getting out of that. Foot. Yeah, I do. I tried, <laughs> and as I was, the more and more, mate, he's like an I, avalanche. Like, yeah, I'm thinking like it wasn't big enough to like I couldn't have died in it like quicksand style. <laughs> it wouldn't have got landslided. Like. But I could have got stuck up to me waist in it, and then probably couldn't have got out. Well, and I was like, pull it. yeah, you don't want to get stuck in pig shit, do you? There's a reason people say thick is pig shit. By the way, it's a goopy, weird, fucked up type of shit. It's not yeah, like because it's, it's like loads of mixes of like hay and shit in it as well, right? So it's like a fucking fibrous. Well, pigs just eat anything. Yeah. So you know, I don't know, but like you know, cow shit all breaks apart for undigested yeah. grass. It's just and, all hay, so yeah. that just like falls. Yeah. yeah. And it comes out in a, it goes through four stomachs, doesn't it? So it's just yeah. like fucking puree. Yeah. Everything's been absorbed. So that's why you have the pats, and when they dry out, it's all straw in that in. Then you have like duck shit, which is just that weird green stuff. Don't even know what's going on with that. Duck shit's particularly rank. And then, you know, pig shit's just like big, thick, meaty human turds. It's gross. <laughs> so got my foot stuck in it and was like trying to pull my fucking help welly me, out. And the problem was like I was already on the hill. That wasn't a hill. Yeah. So the only purchase I could get off my other foot was more shit. So I'm like <laughs> pushing on shit to get my foot out of the other shit. <laughs> going deeper. And going deeper in the shit. So in the end, I thought, fuck it, we're just going to have to, it was like in a just bail, pilot. Just bail. Yeah, just bail. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, that welly might yeah, still be there that well day for all I So, so just saying like, uh, anyway, back to, back to this. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me, let me just read this. Uh, the spread of the coronavirus in, in India has triggered numerous controversial health benefit claims, particularly surrounding traditional medicines. Again, if anyone's ever been to India, you know they tiger bomb, all this stuff. You know, it's it's similar to China in the sense they have a lot, they, they have their own ideas about traditional approaches to medicine. They're very skeptical about Western medicine. Um, and, and they consider themselves to have like, you know, knowledge about certain things that the West doesn't or the West is dismissive of. And they're very protective over aspects of it. Like, you know, you might have seen uh, if you can't afford to go to a hospital again, if you live in rural India, uh, they have these things called bone, bone settlers or right. bone setters, sorry, bone setters. And what they do is they'll literally like, you know, they just Break crack. The bone, yeah. yeah, they crack the bone back into place and put... Yeah tiger balm on it put a bandage around and send you on your way swear by it you know you go so there's a lot of that but anyway um one example uh, is the belief that applying two drops of sesame oil into the nostrils will ward off the coronavirus oil in your nostrils i mean 
At least I mean, that's, that what, that's one's, not the yeah, craziest. That one's got well, at least I'm not logic. drinking piss. Yeah, yeah because drinking... at least if you've got oil in your nose, you're more likely to trap any virus particles coming in, so it might get stuck on the oil. I mean, but there's other ways. Like, you, that's what you got snobs for. That's your point of your nostrils and snobs. Like, I started their job. Baba Ramdev, one of India's most famous yoga masters, said in February, if you practice yoga, your immunity increases. Which can help save a person no. if they get the virus. I reckon if that immunity... could be true. Well, no. Listen, because if you gonna... do exercise, exactly, yeah, you're gonna work up and yeah. you lose weight. No, but you haven't got to lose weight. Just exercising in general. No, but just exercising in general is going to be better than doing fuck all for sure. Like, even well, if you're just I'm... doing some stretches, yeah, you're that, gonna get that... some endorphins running. You're gonna get your moon shift. Uh, yeah, that's group. that's a rule in general. You should be exercising, but there's no getting away from the fact, like. Yeah, say it's immunity is mental. Like you may as well say yoga is good for you. I saw something that was unreasonable today, right? So they were um they were they were doing a story uh, about COVID and how COVID one of the lasting dangers I can't remember which publication it was. I'll find it out and put it on the next episode. Is it about long but, COVID, is it? Well, no, but it was saying that the wor the true nightmare of COVID is it's brought back people hating fatties. That's the real problem. Not all the Do deaths. they, though? Why would well, people eat fatties? It's not like they spread it easier. They just die People easier. don't like fat people. You know, it's just one of them things. It's like our society's geared now that if you're, if you're fat, there's something, you know. Uh, like, I don't know. I feel like people, don't people like overplay you. I mean, is, that, is life that hard being fat? Like, I mean, it's not like you're ridiculed. Well, I don't know, I guess. Or something Used like to be, mate. We, we rewind 200 years ago. If you're fat, Everyone goes, fucking hell, look at that fat bastard living good. the dream. He's yeah, he's eating, eating good. good. He's living the dream. But he's rich. We'd love to marry him. You, you're there like fucking, I don't really hate fire. Chewing a turkey leg. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Just living the dream, right? Like all the women, all the fucking fame, all the status, people complimenting you on your gout. That's a lovely bit of puss lovely coming out Lovely bit of nails. gout there. Oh, it's so bad I can't even fucking stand. <laughs> Capital, sir. I hope I hope one day I'll get gout, you know. I haven't had a fast... vegetable in years. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> sir. And now you fast forward to now, and obviously it's all very image obsessed. We're all, we've got more awareness about science and health, and um, technology's become more ubiquitous, and good food has become easier to obtain. And so now being corpulent is a sign of, you know, again, over people immediately. Yeah. yeah, overindulgence, lack of self-discipline, laziness. It's associated with entirely negative traits. And so you do find people who, and I would say still somewhat irrationally, obviously, uh, dedicate a large portion of their consciousness to hating on fat people. It's a go-to insult. And, you know, you notice it when you are like, like, I'm overweight. People tell me all the time, you must weigh 400 pounds. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not like that. I'm about 30 pounds overweight, probably. Maybe, maybe 35. You know, I don't even get the insult. Like, never been close to 300 pounds in my life. Aren't most people fat? The reason they're fat is because they spend the majority of their time doing what they want to do. I like, <laughs> what is that? You spend most of your time doing what you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, I probably should uh, put a little bit of work into my future self. You're right. That's some good advice. I like. Yeah. Wait, what's the flame? Yeah. I, I don't get it, mate. But, you know, it, it's what, it's what they, people just don't like fatties these days. And so there was this story basically where they were saying the real bad thing to come out of covid is that people are using it to justify hating fat people because the science says you're more likely to die if you're fat and so people are using it cloaking their concern um and of course the reality is like just you know yeah <laughs> that is true but they used this phrase in the article people of size grow up what does that even mean? Ooh, Means like Shaquille O'Neal, like seven foot there, like. Means you're fat. Not, you know, like other large, not tall. Like. <laughs> People of size, man. So we'll break that down on the next show. I think uh, it, it's the 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 idea. Like, listen. How can you be healthy? How can you be the group of people who believe the nonsense of healthy at any size? You 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 might not be fat, sick, and dying if you're overweight, right? But yeah, healthy, but for example, that's really if a deadly it. flu comes out, that's going to affect your cardiovascular system, yeah. and you get infected, and your immune system yeah. is inactive, you might yeah. get fucked. What a surprise! Yeah. So, you know, how can, but how can you be the group who believe that, and then you're and you say we embrace it, 
and don't do fat shaming. And then you also come up with the phrase people are size. <laughs> no, you, I thought you were embracing it. I thought we're yeah, embracing it. I, I, Take the size, word back. Like... Own the word fat then. Yeah. Own it. You know? I mean, it, it is literally what is stored in where is large. Like, it's, it's just the name of the thing you have extra of. Fat. You have extra fat. You have more fat. You are fat. Yeah. <laughs> like, why, why are you ass? But yeah, crazy stuff. Um, anyway, uh, we start to wrap up the show now. I've got a couple of uh, nice little stories to go at the end, some funny ones. All right. Do you, do you remember Jenkum? I remember the word. I have no idea what it means. Yeah, you do. Of course you remember Jenkum. Jenkum, Jen Jenkum was when people, and it, this was all a lie. I'm convinced this was a sigh up to this day. So Jenkum was you would like put piss and shit in a jar, right? And you would let it ferment. And for months, and then you would lift off the lid, have a and drink, and it would get oh, half no, 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 you have a half and it would get you yeah, high, yeah, the fumes. That's what yeah. said, right? Now, I think that was all just a psyop, up, just to see if people would do it. I, I don't think Jenkins was ever is real. Is there anything in there that would work? You're like, oh, do you need alcohol? Do you need some sort of sugar? You need some sort well, of activator. It would, you would be releasing methane. There's you gas would be in there, but... releasing. If you, urine was in uh, urine was in there, effluvium gives off ammonia. These are these are gases that obviously, you know, if you huff them, uh, it will make you lightheaded because it's yeah, a place. That's what I mean. But only because so, it's so, a place in the yeah. oxygen. So you may I as well is, do whippets yeah. off a fucking can so of whipped cream. You're growing a shit jar for months and months just to get yeah. an oofbute uh, methane in there. And then you take one huff, you get three seconds of lightheadedness, and then back to yeah, the Probably, Farming yeah, jars, like. probably just, you know, spear win as well. Like, yeah. can't imagine it's good for you. But anyway, it was the thing. It made the news. It oh, I remember made... now. Yeah. I remember us covering it with the kids. We're doing it like kids in yeah. high school in America. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I remember now. Uh, the Fox News did a report on it from 2007. Jenkum. Like, so it, 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 I don't think it was ever real uh, because it started in the late 90s was like where the, where the phenomenon came from yeah it sounds yeah. like one of those reefer madness things like look what your yeah, kids are doing yeah exactly do you know where your is your kid a shit sniffer <laughs> you, know, <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know something like that so uh, anyway i never bought it but now i saw a story the other day and i was like well this has got to be fake as well this has to be fake because people can't be this is this has got um this, this has got hawks written all over it um High meat. And this was in men's health. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Um, people are eating raw rotten meat to get high. And I, I, I just, I don't believe this. Like, but I, I think, high. I think, I think people are getting pranked. To get with ill, this. but. So right. would, yeah, to get ill, I know, yeah. You can't even eat Bush's beans, mate. This would fucking wreck you. Yeah. Would... Oh, Actually, this is how they make Bush's beans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the bacon of you. <laughs> So anyway, look, in this week's edition of just because something is legal doesn't mean it's a good idea, people on the internet are forcing down chunks of rancid uncooked meat to chase a euphoric high, according to IFL Science. They're calling it high meat, and steak tatar it is not. We're talking about flesh that's been left to decompose for months, sometimes even years. Oh, Patchy yellowish meat that is so desperately putrid. <laughs> oh, so it's made me have a little cat again, oh, but... Yeah, I heard it, <laughs> Oh, he's having a spew. That's bad, but he's having a spew. <laughs> Eat the pussy meat, but oh, yeah, bad. it's riddled with visible bacteria oh. colonies and coated in slime. After eating the rotten flesh, high meat purveyors report an intense feeling of euphoria. Whether it's caused by a reaction or by bacteria as it goes in your stomach, a result of dehydration and de or delirium caused by severe food. <laughs> or oh, delirium, <laughs> My... straight to delirium. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Right. You believe you believe it'll get you high. Some people say it could also be a self-fulfilling prophecy that you believe it'll yeah, get you high. Yeah, so placebo, it like, yeah. Yeah, no one is sure. Whatever is going on, uh, it just goes on and says you should cook your food. Uh, Cheers, Jeff. Yeah. And then it does that thing, the finish sheet. It talks about that. What, What's that? Is that fucking... the fish? The that, yeah, that shark, fish. that fermented shark, or whatever yeah. they have. That just it's like, it's isn't it like there. poor Is it the finish or, or is it like Iceland? A... I think uh, Iceland, I isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Am I thinking of the Dutch one? This one called like Kerstroming or something. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Surstroming, yeah. that's the one. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's Iceland. It is Iceland. I just blame the Finns for everything, you know, like they're always up to something. 
Um, and they're eating rotten fish as well, and they, you know, they yeah, so like that. Fermented meat is not the same as decomposed meat. Fermentation is a controlled process. Leaving a slab of steak to rot is not. That high meat can cause explosive incontinence is unsurprising. And as possible side effects go, probably the least of your worries. Foodborne bacteria, salmonella is bad. <laughs> That's what it's. If you're lucky, you'll experience several days worth of severe pain, fever, nausea, and vomiting. Uh, like, why if don't people? Yeah, why <laughs> if you're gonna go to that length, like, just do the drugs, probably. Yeah, or it? if you're gonna age meat, like, put when you put something on it, but it'd be lovely if you fucking smoke cure with that boy. <laughs> Covered it in salt. Yeah, but then you're just eating it. Oh, yeah, but not, you know what I mean? Gonna if you're going to go through the effort, the waiting to... Mate, you get it. Trust me, mate. If I give you a steak, I've dry aged with butter and salt for two years, I'm going to get you fucking so high, mate. There's going to be so <laughs> much deliciousness in hell. Like, it'll blow the lid off any of the shit these cunts are eating. Yeah, what a waste true. of time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bad one. It is a bad one. Uh, and then, because, you know, we can't get through... Uh, an entire episode without uh, talking about um, just the rank stupidity of the American political landscape. I thought it was going to be goals, and I was ready to do a goal noise. I've got a goal story. We can end. I mean, I, you know, we can end on it. Could do a goal. Like, what kind of news is it? Is it? Is it? Like uh, well, we'll end, we'll end on the goal. We'll end on the goal. We'll end on the goal. We'll do. We'll. We'll. Yeah. In fact, no. Let's go to the end now. We're, we're, we've done over two hours. We've done right. our time, Sam. We've done an episode. So yeah, here you go. This this clip caused outrage. Apparently, uh, people were saying, "There's like I said, big big seagull is out of control." You've seen this video? I showed it to you. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But this apparently caused outrage. Um, I don't think there's anything too bad going on in this video. But basically, this is animal lovers outraged after man grabs fry jacking seagull. <laughs> so a New Zealand man has outraged animal advocates Make after grabbing a protected Fucking seagull. Right. Oh, Sorry, yeah. but I just deafened myself and fuck me. Uh, that was no. <laughs> uh, uh, After grabbing Spooky. a protected seagull that tried stealing his food, a TikTok clip on the of the foiled fry jacking has 22 million views. Uh, he was hanging out at McDonald's in Dunedin in a bid to remedy his raging hangover. <laughs> Good lad. When a squadron of red billed seagulls swooped down, attempting to make off with his fries. Miraculously, Menson was able to nab one of the hangry birds in midair before his snack disappeared down its gullet. So, you can play it, I think. I'm going to do it without sound, like, because it's a little loud as fuck. <laughs> Yeet. It's not bad, he hasn't hurt, eh? Just grab and go, like, grip and a go. Yeah. That's not go for a chip. Grip them. Yeah. yeah, but, like, what, what are you supposed to do there? Just let it have your dinner? I, my, this is the state where it sends it up, mate. It's like it's on an elevator. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it flies off, and it's fine. No harm done to that. Seagulls are robust, you know. Yeah, you're not going to hurt a seagull by giving it a grip, mate. Have you seen the shit they fucking eat? They'd be yeah. fine. Like, I just, I just don't understand. Like, what, what are the alternatives here? Well, like, I, I have to let. Right, like, how far have we come as a species where society's telling me if a seagull goes for my dinner? I have to let the seagull win. Yeah, you have to pay for his food, mate. Yeah, bollocks. And listen, them fries ain't good for it. The burger ain't good for it. The food ain't good for it. Also, in that video, there's millions, mate. Yeah, there's a massive I, flock of them. How are they protected? There's fucking millions just over that McDonald's. I told they're you, mate, we, if they're going to be protected, we need to bring in another bird that eats gulls, like, and they need to be protected as well, because it, the, the population, I don't know the population rate of seagulls, like, but it seems outrageous. But, well, look, we, we've, been da we've been down here before. Like, we've been down this road before. It's just like that we episode of birds. The Simpsons. <laughs> you, end up, you end up having gorillas to get the snakes, <laughs> you know, it's like, you can't do it. You can't start introducing non-native wildlife drones and eat other wildlife fucking drones <laughs> <laughs> sam for the last time you can't drone strike seagulls either. i've told you this so many times deploy the drones we need those drones for very valid wars in the middle east so we are we're, they're, they're currently preoccupied um and look, just one little thing, because I just wanted to get your reaction to it. It's got nothing to do with the show, and we might even cut it out of the VOD if you want. But uh, I think The Onion 
you know the onion the yeah, satirical yeah. publication obviously the onion uh had like an anniversary recently like last few months however many years it's been going okay. and it used to be wicked the onion like i don't know about it now but it used to be great back in the day uh it was always good seeing boomers on facebook get fooled that's yeah. still happening of course that's never going to change um but there was a story and it just it, it, from 2009 they were sharing all their best bits and there was one that fucking had me buckled because it just made me think of you and it was this uh man dies after secret four-year battle with gorilla <laughs> and what they did was right they've took the word can't say you see and replaced it with something funny right gorilla and so he's he's been battling so yeah just, like so this is just brilliant it says here uh local uh local claims adjuster david seaborn a devoted husband of three Died Tuesday at the age of 37 following a long and painful personal battle with a 512 pound <laughs> Eastern Lowland gorilla. <laughs> According to his wife, Christine, one of the few people who was aware of his courageous struggle, Seaborn <laughs> chose to fight the muscular quarter-ton primer in private <laughs> night after night <laughs> in hopes of maintaining his normal life as was possible for his family. I'm just going to get some milk. Why have you got two black guys? I'll be fine. <laughs> In some ways, I'm relieved it's finally over and David can be at peace, said a dear <laughs> Mrs. Seaborn, clutching at a recent photograph of her husband, most of his hair missing after being ripped from his scalp <laughs> by the rampaging jungle beast. What the fuck? To, he fought that terrible gorilla with every last ounce of strength he had, but in the end, David's body just couldn't handle it anymore. Mrs. Seaborn <laughs> added, every morning, he'd look at me with tired eyes and deep scratches across his face, and he'd say, honey, I'm going to beat this thing. <laughs> God, he was brave. <laughs> like the, the new rock you film it. Yeah, uh, mate. What an absolute fucking... When The Onion was really fucking funny, you know what I mean? But I just thought you, I could literally picture you having a secret grudge with a gorilla, <laughs> right? And just getting up at night and just going out and fucking having fights. Putting my fucking and... gloves on, like the eight ounce yeah. wrap in my hands. Where are you going, Sam? Don't worry about it, but I'll be back. Coming back. Like, yeah, half your head off, like. <laughs> Rich, I can't do a short of this. Sam, is everything all right, mate? We haven't done a show for ages. Oh, just, uh, I'll be fine. You know, I'm shaming me sleeping, mate. I'll, yeah. I'll be fine. <laughs> your hair's off. Just got to go to hospital off. tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be ready. So, so there you go. Uh, back when the uh, the onion was good. R.I.P. That poor brave man. Right, so there you have it. I think we can fucking wrap up the show there, can't we? Yeah, we've done so. it. No, episode of I Hate It. Do you want to do the unthinkable and do an episode tomorrow? Tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I can do. I think. Today's a Monday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got more, I've got like another two scripted out and ready to go, mate. Right, all man. the horrible, all the horrible stories. So there you have it. That was uh, that was the news. <laughs> we wish it wasn't. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care.